Today, I'm doing a very special interview with James Patel. He's a concept artist in the industry right now, currently working. Uh, he's underneath a massive NDA, so he cannot disclose where he's working and um, what he's working on. But he'll tell you tons about concept art, portfolios, where to start. Uh, do you need to go to school or you don't need to go to school? What, what are the things you need to learn how to get into concept art? What is good enough to be hireable? So you're in your story, man. Like, how did you get into concept art? Um, what made you want to choose that? career path oh sure um i think as with all things it's very difficult to just heavily invest yourself into something that you think you like because therein lies the problem right like what do i like what do i want to spend some time in mm -hmm. it's a very daunting uh, question to ask yourself because you know even though we're riding this vehicle um through life we don't really know mm -hmm. what it is that we want like you have this inkling on things that you like but saying to yourself i want to invest like the however so much thousands of hours required to become an expert at this it's a it's a huge task so i went about it just through narrowing it down over a course of maybe three years yeah. so i took maybe three years and a few months to go all the way from me starting to do art again to getting my first professional job yeah um and when i first started all the way up to maybe a year and a half ago no idea i wanted to specifically do concept art I knew I wanted to do art, and then I started narrowing down the possibilities. And I think this is a very logical way of going about it. I think you never truly know how you're going to respond to something until you engage yourself in that particular thing, and then just push the dial up to 11 and see how you react to it. So I did that for illustration, and I didn't find that too enjoyable. I illustrated all the way up to um, commissioning, like pretty, pretty large commissions, like 200, 300 euros each. And I was doing that to almost earn a, like an almost livable wage. And I wasn't necessarily enjoying myself, um, even though, you know, by all accounts and purposes, I should have been. Yeah. So I just went with the next logical option because I had a list of things that I thought I would like to do. And the next one was design. Uh, and since I could afford to, I went to design school for a year. And in that, um, it was pushed to absolutely as high as it could be pushed, working like 18, 19 hours a day, just constantly trying to improve. And uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I really had a flair for it in terms of my interest. Uh, it captured exactly what I wanted to get out of this stuff. So I realized that, all right, sure, this is uh, what I want to be doing. So graduated, got my job and uh, I'm working. And even then I narrowed it down from just being creative in general, because I used to be an engineer mm -hmm. and I used to be um, an embedded systems engineer. So I wanted to be that because I wanted to build robots and have creative solutions to stuff, but I didn't work out. And uh, at the time, art was a good avenue for me to uh, kind of get some enjoyment out of life because it was very unfulfilling. So even then, I was narrowing it down. So I guess I basically figured out how to get here over the course of, uh, let's just say, about four, four and a half years. Oh, wow. That's great. So how long have you been uh, drawing or working your way up to concept artist? Yeah, because it's, I, I don't think I've ever met anybody besides maybe one of my teachers mm -hmm. that's ever gone, I want to be this kind of artist. And then exact, it becomes exactly that, like five yeah. or six years later. It's just not something that's particularly possible, right? Like, yeah. look at somebody like Dave Greco, for example. Dave Greco is a phenomenally renowned illustrator right now, but he went to his college for animation. Yeah. And the same story applies to a lot of people. A lot of people get into 3D or get into animation or get into some sort of adjacent. Um, skill and then they become concept artists later on and vice versa people that become concept become maybe game designers and things like that later on like nobody really knows where they want to end up but it's repeated exposure to this industry to the work uh, and you know the different aspects of the work i think really helps uh, you just want to solidify your position but yeah always keep yourself open never like uh like uh disregard other things like i don't think i'd ever switch over the concept if i wasn't keeping my ears open on what concept actually was while i was trying to illustrate yeah. Yeah, man. Would you say, uh, from your ethnic background, did you ever have to deal with the pressures of getting, um, like, from your parents of like you have to get a a certain respectable career? Because uh, me being Nigerian, it's always been a thing where um, you have to either be some someone so your parents can brag about it. Like, I have to be the doctor or the lawyer or the some type of. Um, respectable firm or some some shit where they can always like talk about their like family members too yeah 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 i mean me before right? we had, you, you kind of uh, you, you broke up a little bit hello 
Yeah, uh, that's my yeah. bad. Sorry. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> uh, can you yeah, can you repeat so... what you uh, said? I think it's I think it's okay now. Yeah. So me and you, uh, we've talked about it before on Discord, but like we've had really similar upbringings. So mm -hmm. where I'm from, just like the suburb of India where I grew up, you were either a doctor, an engineer, a businessman, or you were a failure, right? So there's like yeah. many options. So art was not even a thing when I was growing up. Nobody considered it to be a profession of any serious worth. Mm -hmm. Weird because everybody was consuming media at the time. Everybody was playing games at the time, but nobody, I guess it never occurred to me that uh, there are people behind this that are, are artists that are contributing to these projects, but it was just never on the radar. So it wasn't until all the way up to I was 25 when I finally realized that, oh, wait a second, you know, maybe I could do something with this. Just, and this was out of pure desperation. I was just miserable in my engineering job uh, and my schooling and whatever. I just could not handle it anymore. So I switched industries out of desperation, not because it was like a calculated risk or whatever. Yeah. It's like I knew I had to do something else. But definitely, like, there's a lot of pressure from my family. To convince them, I had to, like, not had to, but the way I did it was that I whipped up a huge, like, dossier of my friends on Twitch kind of watching for me, the ones that were professional, um, videos of people are watching for me on Twitch and on, like, different, like, media. Um, I pulled up all of the money that I made through commissions. Like, a, I gave my mom, like, a big fucking bank statement saying, okay, I, I earned this much. <laughs> I had this much of an increase, like, like something like a thousand five hundred or two thousand euro. And so I, I earned this much being an artist. I yeah. think I'm taking this a bit seriously because I think everybody's been in this position where yeah. you were that young kid and um, you like you always had kind of grander aspirations for yourself, but you never really were taken seriously. And I think mm -hmm. especially when you grow older, you're still kind of given the same exact position uh, as an adult. Yeah. So I could not afford my parents saying, yeah, but you've always changed your mind. You've always been kind of lazy about uh, I don't believe you. We're not going to support you mm -hmm. because, you know, this stuff takes a lot of money, right? I mean, oh, I'm yeah. going to switch my career. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I proved it to them, you know, I, I, I was mainly, I was kind of just proving it to myself, really, because at the time I didn't know what I wanted, right? I was in a, felt like a dead end in life and I just had no idea what I even wanted to do. So. I, I didn't even let myself dream about where I would get uh, if I chose this as an industry. I just kept working, just kept pushing, uh, working as hard as I could, trying to improve as much as I could. And then I just got this huge dossier at the end of it that said, listen, this is why I think that, uh, I think I'm serious about this, why I think I'm not just some fucking poser that's mm -hmm. making an impulsive decision. And yeah, it worked, afforded me, uh, got the money that I needed to go to design school. And uh, yeah, now I earn very, very well Especially for uh, Indian standards, like I earned very, very well for my uh, level of expertise. So uh, things yeah. are going good. Things are going as good as they possibly can right now. Yeah, because I always had that uh, issue, like just fighting tooth and nail, like uh, just arguing the fact like I can live a very substantial life where I can like just support myself and maybe like a few others around me if I just went for it. And it's always been like, no, but we know better than you. Like, art's not gonna get you anywhere. You're not gonna make a living off of art. Uh, if, if you say you're gonna be an artist, that means you're gonna be homeless. And uh, it's just that generational gap where they believe like what they, you know, were back in the day, where like, oh, if you chose to be an artist, you'd probably be starving or whatever. Uh, I don't even know where that notion even came up because me just even trying to voice the opinion, like, okay, everything that we're we own in this house everything that you wear everything that you, like everything that you see around you is made by artists so how are you gonna tell me that art cannot provide me like money or food on my table or a roof over my head yeah i think people in general especially parents um people that support other people they just want to make the safe decision so they'll make one that even as, as much as they like to to try and keep it independent Mm -hmm. It's going to be based on what they know best. So just about every Indian parent will know the ins and outs of like how to get an engineering job, how to get into mm -hmm. business, but not a single one I don't think will know exactly how to uh, break into the art industry. So um, yeah, it's just a safer option, which is the option that will have the most amount of like control and understanding, but it's not necessarily what uh, is going to be best for you. So at a certain point, you have to take agency for yourself and uh, to being educated about stuff like this. Otherwise, like I was fully ready to just leave. I just run away from home. Yeah. Uh, I had no qualms by myself. Or like my 
girlfriend's house or whatever and i'd make yeah. money using commissions and i'd do art school online like i was gonna make it no matter what and that's yeah. a big point of like i feel like mm -hmm. a huge part of phase in my this whole phase of my life is just the idea that you sometimes you just want something sometimes you just can't shake your head from it it is exactly what you want and nobody's gonna tell you different and i think when you come up at this kind of crossroads right and you don't have anything holding you back like you have no choice you just gotta explore um, yeah. the possibility of like it being a thing and honestly you can make out of anything um as long as you're willing to work hard enough and enough uh, guidance on the, on the topic and, yeah i mean probably make it as anything mm -hmm. but i think it's important to not ignore uh that urge that you have uh, inside and honestly, i consider to like i thought what me and you were doing which is like pushing for a better personal future yeah. i honestly think that's I think it's a huge liberty because like uh, I don't think if, if I was um, still in the relationship that I was in at the time and if I had people that were me like people at the hospital or children or whatever like there's no probably no way I would ever give up engineering you know I'd be too scared I'd be like yeah there's no way I can like put them out of out of house and food and whatever just because I want to pursue art as my hobby fucking there's no way I was going to do that so I was really grateful that I had the chance to actually do all of this stuff and I didn't have to like suck well being to do so because uh, yeah, not everybody can grind for like twenty hours. Not because they don't want to, but because they like they actually. Because uh, it's a liberty to be able to spend that much time mm -hmm. just on yourself, I guess. Was it? Um, yeah, I always had this uh, problem with uh, my friends around me, and uh, even like the past relationship uh, relationships I had, where where I'm in this situation in life where I'm just mad and frustrated and i just want to be working on cool projects and do cool stuff that not really exactly sure where i want to go but all i knew was that i had to get better so i started getting fixated with art i started like really spending sleepless countless hours just trying to draw as much as i can and still maintain the whole work-life balance of like going to work and attending like personal responsibilities and um, I cut out all the time I had from hanging out. I stopped playing video games completely. Like, I think this has been the, <laughs> so far already in 2021, this is the most I've ever played a video game. And um, people just don't understand where I'm coming from sometimes, where they will assume that like, I'm no longer being friends with them or I'm fake or whatever. And it's just like, I'm, I really want to make this change. And I don't see any other way of making that change without pushing myself to get the skills that I need. Yeah, I, I think we're on the same page with this kind of thing, right? Like we've always yeah. been hustle, that hustle mentality. Mm -hmm. Like from day one, I feel like we don't we come from cultures that don't teach us to just like expect good happen to us. Like we got to go out there and make that bread every yeah. single fucking day. And if you don't like strive, you're always going to be left behind mm -hmm. because society is kind of built in a way to not kind of it's not going to encourage you to do the things you want to do. Like it's built in a way people that not like us, I guess, in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I mean, every every day is going to be a struggle, but that's not something like that you're into. Totally get the idea that. Second, sorry. Wait, what was that? Uh, uh, sorry about that. My mic's. Uh... I, I totally understand how some people just won't get it. Like just recently, I had to have a conversation with some dude's parents, a dude that I've been giving advice to, mm -hmm. for a while, and his parents were super concerned that he's been spending kind of almost all of his day just painting and drawing and stuff, and they were wondering <laughs> like, is this normal? So yeah. I said, listen, I'll, just, I'll, I'll talk to them, you know, I'll talk to them for you. Yeah. And uh, I did, man. And they were super receptive. And I was yeah. really, I was really glad. It almost felt like I was paying it forward because yeah. I wish somebody would talk on my behalf. Somebody could, that could say, look, I'm a professional. I'm working AAA. And this is exactly yeah. what I did. So, so I did that and they were convinced and stuff. And I was really happy about that. But yeah, people won't understand because they, they just don't know, man. They don't know what yeah. it's like. They, have, they don't do anything that's kind of related. Because if you want to be an engineer, or if you want to get into like STEM fields and stuff like that in India, and I'm assuming in America as well, it's like that part is so written in stone. You know exactly what degrees to get, yeah. what are the best schools, and like, you know, how to get a job. But with art, you're like, uh, I guess I'll make my portfolio and I'll hope for the best, right? Yeah. Like, we don't know what the hell we're doing. Yeah. So it's so non structured. And that's kind of cool about it. It's like the wild, wild west of getting jobs. <laughs> yeah. It's a, like, that's, that's what I like about it, honestly, because yeah. in engineering, it was like you were just a number on a piece of paper. Either you're a good grade or a bad grade, and that's all you were. But with uh -huh. art, the cool thing is you can punch about your weight class like a motherfucker. You could really, really 
get like really luck out and you could be just like me right like out of, fresh out of school getting a triple a job like this stuff is insane but if you just manipulate luck just in the right degree and be willing to work for it like you can make anything possible and that's the oh, cool yeah. thing about all that stuff like you could your your entire life could just change like that and that's both the scary and awesome part of this industry because it's it's still fledgling right it's still in its kind of adolescence right now the art especially the gaming side of concept mm -hmm. so that's the nice thing about it is that you could make a portfolio you could submit a single portfolio piece in our station you get one gmail and your entire fucking life has changed suddenly yeah. you everything is secure suddenly you can pay off your your mortgage suddenly you can like go out to eat in places that you don't even want to look at the rep, the, the menu you know it's like right. your whole life just changes like i got my email from my company on the 31st of last year december 31st uh 2020 right uh -huh. and like the day before that I was, I was like okay so i got the small gig with owner thank god i got that so i'm just gonna focus on that i'm gonna try and finish school i'll work on this stuff and i'll work on portfolio like i had a whole plan for the entire next for this for this year that we're in right now right mm -hmm. and then i get this one mail like i fall asleep and i wake up and i get this one mail saying hey you know just be prepared for this guy he's going to interview you right now and i was like what right now and then within like 24 hours like my like my entire life was just changed like the whole course of my life was changed and this is just how fast this things move right and like the guy was awesome the company is great i'm learning like an incredible amount yeah. but the point is right like that's how quick this can change that'll never happen with like something like engineering because uh like you you get a small job you get a slightly larger job you get a slightly larger job you're on the fucking grind uh and there's no miracle man but like you can make miracles happen and in this, in this industry like your hands can make miracles and that's what's fucking that's so cool yeah, right? it's so awesome right I think, I, and the reason why I like I love art so much is that there's no level cap to it, and I think that's also also makes it like kind of frustrating, because like when do you know when is it good enough? Like when do you know when you're like okay now I'm hireable? Oh uh, man, you don't. Because there are really... people out there that are like just fucking killers when it comes to art. Like you you, you will never expect them. Like uh, what was her Soul Cora? Her animations were so cool. And you will assume that she's already working in the industry. And she's like, no, I just live in Brazil. I never worked anywhere. I just thought I wasn't good enough. So I have to keep on trying harder and harder. <laughs> yeah, no kidding, right? Yeah. It's like, uh, I think what people kind of underestimate is like the industry is not just like this faceless, large, like matte black building on the landscape. That's mm -hmm. the same thing overall. Like the industry is a hyper vast, very like, crazy crazy uh like overall this mass that has so many facets to it so just like how there's no real bar for commission work mm -hmm. there's no super super real bar for industry work either yeah. uh, it just depends on like where you're getting into like there's it's a lot more solid than i feel like commissions are but yeah. at the same time uh oh, the, yeah. you don't even know like how ready you are until you just compare yourself to people that are working there already mm -hmm. and you send your portfolio out and you just hope right like there's a billion reasons why you should and should not get hired but once you hit a certain point, and I think once people that are professional are telling you, yeah, you should probably apply to my company or whatever, I think at that point, it's safe to say that uh, you are probably going to get some degree of job or the other. Like right mm -hmm. now, like my portfolio could probably get me into a lot of like AA studios, maybe low level AAA, definitely not the studio I'm working on right now. I think we lucked out. But yeah. um, you, you kind of get a feel for this, the, the more you involve yourself in into what's out there. I think Soul Cora, her major problem was that she wasn't talking to too many people that knew what they were talking about. Yeah. But she didn't have too much of a professional network. Yeah. So I think if she had people actively telling her where she stood, uh, she would probably have a job way sooner. She'd be like a lot more motivated to uh, to push a bit faster. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this is really important. Like we talk about grind all the time, but the thing is like the two most important things to get what you want is to be able to put the effort in and also to know where. In direction and effort, right? So this direction is a super important thing that I don't feel like most people are privy to. Um, like you, you can go to like YouTube University as, as long as you want to and like learn the fundamentals of stuff, but you need to know what your industry is looking for. You need yeah. to know what people are out there trying to like actively try and get. And this will cut your time getting a job in like years. Like if you just do what the industry wants from you right now, you can beat all the other people that aren't doing what the industry wants. Just being more productionable is huge, especially for concept art. Because concept art is not art that you can just see run in the mill most of the time. A lot yeah. of concept art is just behind closed doors. So you actually need people to tell you what they're doing these days. Yeah. You need people to tell you how much 3D is being used, how much line drawing is being used. You need to have this information readily available to you. So it's good, usually speaking, to just know a couple of friends to give you direction. 
the effort is by like obviously the most most important thing and mm -hmm. uh yeah you, you really can't do without it you need to know after a certain point where you're heading uh, where to push and that's gonna get you the rest of the way oh yeah uh i i cannot stress how important and how valuable it is for anyone here because i i used to be i'm not i'm not that very tech savvy uh like at the end of the day like i was like more of a traditional artist i hardly got to play around on computers i come from more of a of a i want to say technologically disadvantaged lifestyle but like more of a i guess when it comes to like money i always had like that disadvantage when it just having these things around I never really had a decent computer for Photoshop. I was always restricted from using the internet because of, you know, super Christian background or super Catholic background, actually. And um, by just joining in on social media and jumping into these discords have really changed like how I think um i learned so much more from just interacting with others uh especially like people like you james and uh there's tons of other artists within these discord servers that have experience in a lot of different fields some fields that you might be interested in going to like uh we have uh another person she was well, it monster she does uh ui design and she has the time and money to just you know work on her own work in the, like independently while she works for google she has like a lot of like vacation days uh tons of benefits and it just seems like it doesn't always have to end with like i need to get like a concept art job maybe i have to like get a regular job where i'm still doing stuff creatively but I still now have the luxury and the time and the financial backing to work on something where I really want to go for. Yeah, that's a funny thing, right? I feel yeah. like it's good advice to give, but mm -hmm. it's definitely not advice that applies to everybody. Because exactly. this whole idea of um, I can, I'm going to do something while I do the thing that I want to do, like mm -hmm. it's dangerous. Um, and I think it depends. Like I always have this thing that I tell myself, which is where do I break or where do you break? I think yeah. everybody can bend a certain bit and they will break at a certain point, right? And yeah. I think finding early is really, really important because for instance, like let's look at within concept, what am I willing to do? What am I not willing to do? I think I'm willing to do environments a lot of the times, um, especially if you're paying me for it. I don't, I, I, I'm, I'm trained in environments. I can do them really well, but what do I want to do? I want to do props. I really want to do guns and knives and things like that. That's my goal. I, I can, but the thing is, it's like I can bend with that. If you give me a job and you say do characters, if you give me a job and say do environments, I'm fine doing something else while I wait for my prop jobs to like come to fruition, right? That's okay. But then don't ask me to do engineering at the same time for the same reason, <laughs> right? Because I can make more money right now as an yeah. engineer in the Netherlands than I will right now as a concept artist. Yeah. But I'm not gonna fucking mainly because uh, yeah, I mean, I, I can't stand doing that right now, right? I can't. Mm -hmm. this is, I, I simply will break if I do that, so I can't bend to that. Degree. Yeah. So I think figuring that stuff out is really important. The mm -hmm. same thing applies for a lot of people. I feel like want to become character designers for concept, mm -hmm. and I don't think they understand just how comp like how competitive that is, how yeah. unlikely getting a job early for that is. But does that mean you stop trying? Not really. You have to ask yourself: Do you bend or break in the situation? Right? Like, is all you want to do characters? Are you hell bent? Have you tried out every other possibility, and you know for sure characters is all you want? Then sure, do characters. No, at that point you don't even have a choice. You have to do characters. You can't like. Make yourself miserable by doing anything else. But if you can bend, you bend. I think the same yeah. thing applies for like getting a job that's adjacent. Like, I, I don't think I would have pushed as hard or gotten my job as fast if I was doing something else at the same time. Um, but at the same time, like if I could afford to, and if like I had people that are supporting me or whatever, or if I was fine just working in a distant field, I would have done that. But, uh, yeah. I think it's important to just take take into account like what do you like doing, uh, what are you comfortable doing, and then just make decisions based on that. Um, very difficult to just say what's optimal because what's optimal for me always would have been just continue doing engineering continue just making money and just do art at the end of your day right but mm -hmm. yeah i don't think some people can't do that you know people are not wired that way some yeah. people are so all in 
uh, that like if I wasn't doing art and, uh, and concept art, like I don't know what the hell I'd be doing, right? Like yeah. I, my life seemed to lack direction and meaning and purpose. So, I doing. so I think if you're a fanatic or you're just as stupid as I am, then uh, definitely <laughs> just find what you want to do and then invest all your time into it. Uh, just really, really double down. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you, you gotta. <laughs> it's like a difficult call to make. Sure, like you never know. Yeah. I, have, I think I have a huge advantage in that I wasted my life for like 10 years. Cause I know exactly what yeah, I Yeah, so it gives you that bigger push. Like, okay, I dicked around for way too long. I need to like start lighting a fire underneath my ass and I got to work even harder than I did before. Yeah, no kidding, right? Like I might have days where I'm a little bit slower. I might have days where maybe it's a little bit harder to get out of bed, but I have yeah. not had a single fucking day, not even one, where I thought I don't want to do art today. Never has right. it ever occurred to me. With engineering, I feel like I had that, that thought like, Every second, second, you know, every second hour, like it was like a wake up call every single day I had that. And you asked me, why didn't I switch? Why didn't I do something else? Right? Well, that's all I've been doing for the past 10 years and making that switch is hard. Mm -hmm. You're giving up security, you're giving up connections, you're giving up knowledge, you're giving and, up and everything. And you're already like comfortable and, too, right? Yeah, no yeah, no kidding, right? Like that, that it's, it's a difficult really decision dangerous. to make. I think it's really in human nature that we will do everything we can before we actually make a change that's worthwhile. Mm -hmm. um, like the same thing happened with COVID responses and whatever, like if at any historical event of cataclysm, like our nature is to just stick with what we know as long as possible, even in the face of like total adversity. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's exactly what I did. And I, while I say I don't regret it because I don't, because I think I learned a lot from it. Uh, it definitely, I could have done without it. I think I could have learned this lesson without as much pain and suffering, but, uh, I mean, I learned it now. I learned it really well. And I feel like the fact that I learned it the way that I did lets me speak about this cautionary tale or trying to play it too safe and uh, hopefully motivate some people later on in life to uh, try and secure the future a little bit earlier um, and not just wait. Because if you're anything like me, uh, you're not going to settle for anything that you don't want. Like yeah. all my life, I think people thought, like I, I thought I was lazy and my mom mm -hmm. told me I was lazy yeah. and that, that I didn't work. But honestly, what I was, was I was not motivated. I didn't yeah. give a shit about what I was doing. I didn't yeah. care. And I thought I did. I really, I really did think I, I cared about what I was doing, but I had no idea what it meant. Like, mm -hmm. I, I don't think I pulled a single all my through all my studies, maybe like barely one or two. For concept art, I think my very first day in school, I nearly pulled an all-nighter. And I've pulled in so many since then. Not to say that that's something you should be doing, but it's, a, it's an example of just how willing I am to just sacrifice my health and my mental well-being if I need to, just to make this work. <laughs> Again, I'm not going <laughs> to motivate anybody or tell anybody to do something that's crazy or unhealth unhealthy, right? Because yeah. I've done that. Yeah, because I've, I've deemed it. I'm, I'm fine with that like, exchange. I'm okay with it. Yeah, but uh, the point is, is that um, I, I had clear signs that in my life, it was not because I was some sort of a, like unmotivated idiot that just want to take it easy. Mm -hmm. I just really didn't find the thing that I wanted to uh, I wanted to do. And now that I find another I found it, right? That's all I want to do on a day to day basis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel like it's so many levels, and I feel like, uh, do do you ever feel like it's an age thing? Like, uh, the the older you get, the more you start realizing like the stuff that you want out of life. Yeah, for sure, you build up this understanding because you're just so sick and fucking tired of just like going through the same like the same mental patterns. You know, these same cyclical cycles of thought. You've been here a hundred times before. Where yeah. oh god, this shit sucks, and I'm so tired of this goddamn thing. I'm tired, tired of talking to the same people. And the seeing the same faces, and I'm tired of being that guy that uh, is always gonna second best to other people. I wish mm -hmm. I was more motivated. I wish I was like like, like this person or that person. And it yeah. just turns out that like I can be that person, but just not in this fucking industry. And then <laughs> I had to switch to yeah. something that I actually like. Yeah. It's like I think Kobe has this quote where he says like everybody's life, like uh, there's gonna be a point where you find that one thing, and that one thing will be what makes your life worth living. Something like yeah. that. It's like. I didn't find that thing at all. I didn't even think such a thing existed until I started doing uh, art full time. And then I yeah. realized, all right, fine. This is going to just burn my life away to get better at quickly. Mm -hmm. Like everything just made sense after that. Like the amount of like bad thoughts I was having in my head, yeah. uh, the amount of like the, the restlessness that I was having in my spirit, the fulfillment I had my day to day, it all changed, man. Everything changed. Um, yeah. And I'm so grateful to be able to like be at peace like, to give you an example, right, it got so bad when I was uh, back um, in my previous career that I couldn't, like, close my eyes without having, like, an intrusive thought or something, something that, that told me that I wasn't worth uh, the investment that was put into me. Uh, oh, and now, like, these days, I, I'm so 
so happy man especially given the context yeah like knowing what the alternative is like like pushing for me is nothing yeah. uh, I'll, I'll push huh. like no problem i feel the exact same way as i did like before i got into my school and mm-hmm. uh, yeah i don't hey, what's up redo uh everyone this is uh redo uh, another great awesome skilled artist i'm not gonna call him talented i'm gonna call him skilled because he has worked really hard to get to the point of where he's at right now in his art path and journey so uh how you doing man all right yeah sorry i'm late <laughs> it's all right no worries yeah uh nice to meet you james hey my husband yeah you can call me uh derek if you want to that's my that you know hard. government <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, but yeah, I was I was listening, and everything you said made a whole lot of sense. And one thing that I know for sure is that the positive attitude, like the way you take things, is very important too. You know, like I haven't really had that many people to speak to in the industry, so I haven't really gotten all the feedback that you've gotten, like like with your experience. So like the way I take it is like I want someone to tell me I'm trash. I want someone to tell me like exactly what's wrong with my work from the perspective of the industry. So that I could know what sells, so that I could know what to do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, cause I feel like because people wouldn't be saying what they're saying without a reason. You should only, I, I believe, you should only not listen. Is what they're saying is devoid of reason. You know what I'm saying? If it's extremely bias based, then that's just their bias, and that's okay. But it doesn't mean that your work is inherently flawed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, um, I've always had this rule for myself because I, I wanted to get good as quickly as possible. I have this internal rule, which is just called consider the context, wherein no matter who's talking to me, I always yeah. think about what they're going to say. But I also consider, like, exactly who's telling me this. Like, if, if it's a character yeah. designer telling me, man, characters are so big in the industry right now, I'm getting jobs like crazy. I'm going to be like, yeah, but like, the only thing you're searching for is character jobs. So who knows if environment jobs are more than that? Yeah. You know? So, yeah. Consider the context, I think, is a great thing. Like, for example, mm-hmm. like me and, and Millie are advocating like the hustle mentality because we're big, big proponents of it. But nobody, yeah. nobody's going to say that you can't like make it in this industry if you're not prepared, like, twice, you just mm-hmm. burn your life force away and do like 15 or 16 hours a day. Like, it's totally possible to do this healthy, uh, to do this right, I would say, exactly. um, without affecting your people around you and yourself. Mm-hmm. But at the same yeah. time, also consider the fact that like we're both older guys uh, and we really want <laughs> this. And we entire life <laughs> Yeah, yeah man. We got this hunger eating away at us, right? We may as well put it to use finally. Yeah, and, like, get yeah. Some fucking work done, you know, like that. That hunger, that like starvation. I just recently got that. In the last few days, I took like a mini vacation. I'm like all oh, refreshed and recharged and shit. And I'm like, I'm really ready to work now. And let's see. All right, let me think about a more constructive question. Uh, let's say. Shit, I had a question in mind, but I forgot it for a second. I'm trying to think. <laughs> Because I was listening to what you were saying. Uh, oh yeah, the the balance, like, because these jobs, like these artwork jobs, like this is us sitting at our desk for like twelve hour days of work, without moving and shit. What do you do to balance that out to make sure that that doesn't affect your health and the people around you? Because there's always a way, you know. Like it's a lot of scheduling, right? Yeah, for sure. I think there's a way, but right now I don't think I'm I'm a good person to ask this question to because I just I'm just like fresh out of school. I got my first like really big gig, so all I've been doing yeah, okay. since I got is just grinding like a madman. But um, hey, I still that's the job. Out. I used to be a powerlifter, um, so I'm still working out okay. on the rig. Um, Word. And I like still going out, taking my dogs for walks and stuff. But like honestly yeah. speaking, like um, this is not going to be like the healthiest profession to get into unless you actively try to make it so. But I think yeah. that people will, will like overstate how, like they'll be like, oh, you gotta fucking grind every, every single day, overtime every single day, baby. Like these people are idiots. Uh, don't ever do overtime. Like the only reason that I do extra work every single day is to get better at my job. But my job has strict requirements. Yeah. I'm not supposed to work more than eight hours a day. So I got plenty of time to do something like, like just like we back, did back in school, right? Like you get back from school, you do your homework, you go to the gym or whatever, right? So I, yeah. I have the same option too. I just choose to say, you know what? Like, I could just grind for another year or so, and then I don't have to ever worry about this thing ever again. I got my secured. So I think it's like people overstate just how crazy you need to be to get into this industry. It's actually quite reasonable, yeah. especially when you get to the higher paying jobs and stuff. It's like, yeah. nobody's gonna like uh, want you to like put in overtime uh, on a regular. Like I feel like these stories are kind of blown out of proportion. Um, 
to a lot of these jobs will just be a nine to five. People will be going back to their jobs, uh, going back to their kids and their family and stuff like that. Like you'll have plenty of time to do your usual routines and stuff. You don't have to squeeze it in any more than anything else, really. It's just that you got to be willing to sacrifice that a little bit for the first couple of years and you know, trying to just making your name for yourself. You know, those first few clients, you know, that first little uh, in pieces, you know, just to get the ball rolling. And after that, it's yeah. smooth sailing. You can do it however you like to. Okay. Now, I see that makes a lot of sense, too. So to piggyback off of what you said with the, uh, like, how hard you need to grind, I think that, like, that's not necessarily over-exaggerated, but, like, people always take it out of context and just grind with no target. Like, what specifically are you grinding for? Like, what are the results you're looking for? Like, you got to have, like, short-term checkpoints. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think good direction like, is always important. Uh, yeah. Not to mention, right, like, the guy that taught me, Feng, he's, like, a master of businessman as well as an artist, and he said that he's going to see... stay up all the time in his life. Yeah. He must have, he must be like amazing at scheduling, like ridiculous with it. No, he's, that's he's, he's more like like crazy, just workhorse you know? crazy. Like uh, he, he's all about that hustle mentality, you know. And I feel like that's yeah. also geared towards like older people, because when he talks about it, and like I guess if it's like the younger people that are listening, it's gonna be coming off as like toxic uh, hustle mentality, Gary Vaynerchuk <laughs> uh, type of shit. He, I don't know how how that happens. Like, is it like a perspective thing? Like, because he's not filtering it for them. It's it's more of a perspective thing. Like, if you're trying to go for this industry, you gotta like work hard. You gotta spend up to like these ten to twelve hours sometimes working on these like yeah. designs and stuff. Like, trying to really get good at all the fundamentals. Like, being if you want to yeah. work in a triple A stuff, you gotta be excellent at anatomy, excellent at, at perspective, excellent at everything. Yeah. Uh, put all this stuff into context, right? Like, like I'm not gonna grind. I got no reason to grind as hard as I am right now. I'm just doing it because I'm out of my goddamn mind. But yeah. honestly speaking, like, you grind I mean, when you're learning. You grind when you're making your first like debut in this industry. But nobody is gonna mm -hmm. expect you. Like, it's gotta be a really, really weird company to say you gotta work like 14 hours a day or whatever. Like, when you're learning and when you're in an environment that pushing is rewarded really well. Like in my environment yeah. in school. If I push like 15 hours a day, I'm going to get my 15 hours worth because everybody else is pushing me that much. I'm going to get see, that feedback. That's yeah, totally fine. But on that's the job, very important too because you need to know that your time is going to be worth it. You can't be grinding in the wrong places. Like, like for example, a lot of retail jobs, doesn't matter how hard you work, like they don't really care. But jobs like these where like how hard you work affects your final result, which affects how much money you make, like working hard actually is a benefit for you. So I feel like there's a lot of like philosophical thoughts and things that people should think about before they go to the industry. Like what exactly are your goals? Like that really determines how hard you should work. You know? Yeah. I think people should uh, try as much as they can to just figure out what they're getting into. I think I have the liberty yeah. of being able to go to the school I went to where like everything was, was put towards an industry standard. So I knew what the deadlines okay. were. I knew what the quality margins were. So I had like a really, really good, strong feeling about getting into the industry by the time I graduated. Uh, and I had my job before I graduated as well. So uh, I didn't have the question too much. So if, if, any, if people can get that kind of experience, whether it's through internships or through like secondhand experience, or if you just make a project for yourself, ask somebody else to run it for you, just push everything to the, to the end degree. And then just like just see you know what what that feels like see um how comfortable you are under those kind of conditions and then you'll be able to think about how much you're by your side. do you even still want to do this to begin with so you'll be able to think all right and that's just good advice in general by the way if you want to get into an industry just try and pretend you're on the job and then see how long that lasts <laughs> yeah although <laughs> the, the classic uh fake it till you make it <laughs> Looks great on portfolio as well, by the way. If anybody in the chat is like looking to get into concept, like getting into, like doing a project oh, yeah. is the next best thing to actually having worked on a job. All people yeah. Oh, here, here's something that I that I learned the hard way, and I can't stress this enough for anyone who's like starting out and you want to enter any specific industry, do that type of work. If you want to make comics, make comics. If you want to make concept art, make concept art. Like work on doing the actual job itself. Because nothing's going to teach you more about it than actually doing it yourself. Like, 
because I, I don't like seeing when people tell me like, oh, I'm preparing to start working on this. And I'm like, okay, well, then you should practice making it. Don't prepare to make it. Practice making it because you learn more from that than you will not doing it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, I think me and Millie have both encountered like these, what do you even call them? Like these fundamental monkeys that just sit on their laurels and all they will do all day. Long. Just practice, practice, practice. And they'd be like, yeah, one day, one day I'm going to get good enough so that I can start trying to do the job that I'm supposed to be doing. In the future. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Like, yeah. my time learning to get better and to be a professional and all this stuff, right? Like, I've encountered a lot of types of laziness. Laziness doesn't mean I don't want to work today. I'm just going to sit on my ass. It could mean a lot of things. It could mean you're not yeah. going to do. You're intentionally avoiding the stuff that you know you should be doing. You know, Cutting corners. The stuff. For sure, Cutting. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, this stuff manifests in ugly ways. So you got to be, like, damn sure that if you want to do something, you, you do it, you know? You don't need yeah. all that much fundamental to get into any industry. Just start doing it, figure out where your flaws are, and then work on them if you need to. But yeah, I agree completely. Just do the do the work. Represent yeah. Your, your industry. It's, I was like, actually, like I was one of those dudes, those fundamentalist dudes. Like I was over here just drawing all these characters, drawing all these like, yeah. you know, <laughs> like anatomy and you shit. Becoming that, you know. Yeah, I'm like, oh, well, I need to know this if I'm gonna do comics. I need to know these muscle groups and all that shit. And then I was like, all right, let me actually draw a comic. And then all my fucking weaknesses and everything I thought I knew, <laughs> everything I thought I knew that I didn't know came to the surface. I'm like, wait a second, what's the process I should take for doing panels? Like, how should I separate things? How should I ink it? What's the workflow? Like, I don't, I didn't have none of that. So like, it took me a year to make my first little like chapter of my web comic, and I was like, all right, I learned so much more from doing that than everything I had prepared for beforehand, and now. And it took me half the time to make the next chapter and then half the time to take the next chapter and half the time to make, take the next chapter all while the quality is still increasing. So not only am I getting faster, I'm getting better just by doing the actual job because I know what corners to cut and when, how to, how to panel, you know what I'm saying? Prioritization of like what is more important. So what takes, what gets more effort, you know what I'm saying? So much you learn just by doing the job, you know? Yeah, people will just to uh, what's easy, generally speaking, but yeah, you gotta just do it at some point. I mean, not to mention, right? Like, of course, there could be uh, the problem of like, you just keep doing and doing and you keep reinforcing mistakes and stuff. But like, I feel like this problem happens a little bit less often. Yeah, but just be clear. Just, just yeah. Uh, just have like people that you can go to for advice. People that are saying, okay, obviously you're pushing a little bit too weirdly right now. Take a step back, learn this better. Just have people around, just kind of check you. But uh, yeah, yeah. You know, okay, you well, learn better than easy. Better. Here's a question, because that, like what you just said, just reminded me of uh, networking. You need to know people. Like, you absolutely need to know people. So, from the concept artist perspective, like, how would networking be different for that specific job that might differ from the rest, like, in your experience? Uh, let's see. Like, I know a lot of people will just purely based on, like, just DMing people on ArtStation. I don't think this is necessarily something that's unique to mm-hmm. concept art, but I think people underestimate just how useful this stuff is. So, like, remember okay. that... Like, so, ArtStation like, really is the place to be? Uh, for sure. If you want to get a job in this industry, like, in concept, you need to be on ArtStation. Um, but I think people really underestimate just, like, where contacts come from. Because I think people think contacts is, like, a guy in a suit with, like, black sunglasses running, running a limo or something, right? But contacts yeah. could mean anybody, you know? Like, I got my yeah. first job through uh, my buddy Ona, who was... Uh, <laughs> The streamer on Twitch, and she's fantastic. Like, I've absolutely been a phenomenal person from the day one that I met her. I think I met her on my stream. And eventually, like, when I went off to to design school, she just grinded a lot. She got she made her own contacts. She got her job, and then she offered me one uh, when like in the middle of my school. She said, "Hey, I know I still remember your work and stuff. Uh, we would like you to come and work for the company if you'd like." And I said, "Hey, of course, I would love to." But that was just some person on Twitch, right? So that my point here is that I think people really underestimate just how many opportunities that they're involved with or are missing uh, on yeah. a day-to-day basis. You know, like everything could be an opportunity. I remember on my own stream, right? Because I used to stream pretty often. Like I had one of the lead concert artists in Riot donate money to me and say nice things about me on his stream. Like, do you really think that if my work was as good as it may have been, uh, it could have been at the time? Like I would not have a, like a slightly higher shot, like a higher percentage shot of getting into Riot. 100% of my chances would have been increased, right? Yeah. I think, I think applies like, I've gotten people jobs on like the Ethan Becker Discord, for example, and in my own professional circle. Like I've gotten people jobs just because I knew them, 
because I, I, had, I went to school with them or I did project, projects with them. Like I just knew them from some other area and I was able to get them work. So the point is, is that uh, like the people that you're studying with right now, the people in your communities that are exceptional or that are really good, try and stand out to these people, try and do work with or for these people. Um, yeah. Because for example, Ona, going back to her, right? I mean, she's, she's incredible. Like uh, we used to get on call all the time on Discord. We used to talk about where to, where to push your work, where to push my work, what, what was good, what was bad about this kind of stuff. And we did that stuff constantly, man. And I never knew, it never like sunk in that Ona might be giving me a job one day. It was just me you know, being friends, right? But exactly, because we all need people to talk about this stuff with. For sure, but I was inadvertently doing exactly what I needed to be doing, which was just in involving myself with people that are as dedicated as I am and that yeah. will have their own kind of connections inevitably, right? I was just doing it because he was awesome. But at the same time, like, that's what you got to be doing. And, like, um, stand out if you can. But, like, no matter where, like, don't think about industry contacts as this, like, this really wide island on a distant shore. Everybody around, yeah. like, people, people, people in this chat right now, talking to like people like me or Millie or whatever, like we could be your industry context air quotes and like, out to us. You get to know us, like people in the chat, like Guitar and, and Heidi and all these people that I know personally or through Twitch or whatever, right? It's like, you really think that like they stand on like a zero percentage chance with respect to somebody else to get into my companies? Hell no, of course I'm going to favor them in a certain degree, right? Because they yeah. know me and I know them pretty well. So the interpersonal aspect is huge. Yeah. So while contacting people can be done through email and through through going into cons and stuff if it's possible, maybe not these days, but like, yeah. The yeah. major point I think people are missing is that um, we're all on this grind together and some of, us, some of us will make it and some of us won't. But the point is, is that if you just are respectable, if you're offering advice, you're helpful, if you just make a good impression on people around you, even if you don't make it and they do, they could become your contacts in turn. Like if Millie wants to get into concept, like of course I'm gonna like try to pull for him, right? I know him pretty well at this point, right? I know him pretty well. I know he has the same mentality. I know he's willing to put in the effort. Like, so basically I can become his contact if I wanted to, uh, when, the, when the time comes, right? But I am his yeah. contact. So same thing applies with Yano, um, applies to anybody. So I think realize that every community you're in is this like source of potential employment, but don't treat it like that. Don't treat it like a business, but just realize that it, it does pay just to be somebody that's that that is helpful, that's respectful, that, that whose work is always good, oh. is always willing to give advice. Oh. Like just, just give back. 100%. Give Treat advice. people how you want to be treated, man. Like yeah. you just got like honestly, you don't even have to be the greatest person. You just have to not be an asshole, and it, yeah. that's not hard at all. <laughs> you know, it really ain't. It really ain't. <laughs> There's some people like, that like make it into a career to just be a dick, and I'm like, yo, what's yeah, I'm mean, like, you, <laughs> like shit, man. Like, see, like. That was exactly like I agree with everything that James just said. All of that makes perfect sense. And the thing is, uh, especially everybody on everybody in the chat right now, like join the Discord. Like join the Discord and hang out in there. And meet meet these other artists that are like just like you. Like just just meet them. Like I know it's kind of weird to start out because uh, it was like just this year I first got Discord for the first time because I I now have a PC that's like can handle it and everything so all right let me try to meet artists especially yeah. with covid and shit Flip my never life around exactly because i have never known this many artists especially artists like at my level because that was something that was really hard to find mm -hmm. like in the town that i was in and, and everything without having like being able to connect and like i was like i literally just didn't know where the artists were at you know so now that i know and i'm seeing all these artists i'm working with these people and like they're like showing me tricks i'm showing them tricks like i've gotten so much better made so much more progress since i've done this so it's like really just get out there talk to those people share your work you know what i'm saying make sure you know it's really i don't know how else to explain it like you just you just gotta try yeah i think people that characterize all this stuff is like man it's a doggy dog the world out there like mm -hmm. definitely like don't share your secrets like that has never worked out for me at all oh I've, yeah i've given i've given back to as many people as i could from day one and it's always just come back to me it, yeah it's not even like a like a nice guy routine or whatever like this no is seriously hard, this is a hard journey man and all of us know how hard it is from all the way down to like people that right. begin to like professional concert artists we all know how rough it is no matter what the industry is so like just try yeah. to give back as much as you can you know just just uh, just be good. Just be good to your surroundings, and it'll definitely yeah. like just lead by example. And, and, and for for those people that are like way too literal and like just cannot like 
because you know there's those paranoid people who cannot accept that people can just be nice without expecting anything in return like if this is the way you want to think about it at least make sure you're, you're bringing something to the table especially if like because i don't know how to explain it like you know those people those mindsets that i just can't accept that you're giving them something for free yeah you know what i'm saying I feel like being in LA would do that to somebody because I was hella yeah. suspicious of everyone. And you know what? It's not even like that, too. Well, I've been approached by people who gave me like opportunities where I thought they were just literally out to get me for no fucking reason. I'm like, why? What's all it's point? probably it's probably because of the nature of LA and yeah, and all the movies and shit and all the, the stigmas about how, how people are were trying to succeed over there. And here, like, here's one thing that I can understand can make the people seem not untrustworthy. Cause like I'm from New York, thing like New York and California oh, yeah. are pretty pretty it's different. Pretty similar, I thought it'd be similar. Yeah, my cousin, no, it's similar, but it's not at the same time. Like uh, my cousin says, and a few other people I spoke to that they said that the differences that they noticed when they went to California is this, uh, it's like different philosophies almost. Like yeah. like California is a lot more carefree. There's no sense of urgency, whereas in New York everything needs to be done like fast 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 no one has time for shit everyone's always working you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and he says that when he was like just going around he was even in a nice area everyone was dressed as if they were camera ready like like everyone could have you know what i'm saying so like everybody mm -hmm. cares about their looks a lot and that mm -hmm. starts to that kind of fuels negative subconscious tendency so it makes you not feel like you can't trust anyone you know oh yeah that, that's the way i made sense out of it you know? well well, I don't, I don't know, man. Like, like of course, like you can't trust everyone, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, so like that's actually just you know your, that's just a necessary precaution, like to just always be careful, like who you trust with information. Don't just, you know, what I'm saying, like we mm -hmm. we still gotta be adults and realistic about everything. Like, so take all the shit we're saying today as like with a grain of salt and just apply it to your life, the best way you can. Because I'm learning, I mean, I'm learning a lot just by listening to this right now, too. I'm like, I hear thinking about a lot of shit. <laughs> Got you in a <laughs> contemplative mood. Contemplate? I don't know, man. Just, I, I like thinking, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, just doing this stuff more. Like, that's the first time to get better at anything, is just to do it, right? Like, you figure yeah. out what the pitfalls are. Yeah. It's just like interacting with people, right? I have like a lot of rules in my head when it comes to talking to people online artists online um i have a lot of these internal rules for example like i, I teach a lot of people uh even though i probably shouldn't but like I, I try to just get information out there as much as i can and i have yeah. a rule with myself to say i never ever going to invest any more into somebody than they invest into themselves so if like if you're willing to put in like two weeks worth of effort then i'll give you a quit that's two weeks worth of effort worth right but if you're going to barely do anything for me then i'm not going to do anything for you either yeah. i think things like this is, is, yeah. is healthy it's healthy to kind of uh, have defenses for yourself because at the end of the day, I feel like it needs to go said that like, I think the journey to become an artist, like a professional artist, it's kind of lonely uh, a lot of the yeah. times because yeah, at the bro. end of the day, you kind of just stop burning the lamp oil and uh, you're all alone. Uh, and this might like evoke certain kind of mentalities with certain type of people. Like, maybe you hate people. Maybe you uh, don't talk to people as much as you can. But I think uh, the thing is, yeah. watch out for number one. So even when it comes to like talking to people, in general, right? Like you got to give them a certain amount of chances. You got to be really worried about people trying to use, use uh, like take advantage of you. But they're also pitfalls. But yeah, I mean, you can't yeah. do it because like I feel like the potential benefits gonna outweigh the safety element. You gotta just yeah, see what works. I also learned that the hard way. Like because I'm so nice and like to take care of people around me. You know what I'm saying? Because uh. You know what I'm saying? Because like, I feel like if I learn something the hard way, I learn it so that other people don't have to learn it the hard way. You know what I'm saying? And one, like, it actually got to the point, this is when I learned that it was like my freshman year of high school. I was taking a graphic design class. And, you know, graphic design is much easier when you can draw. But I failed the class because I was always up walking around helping everybody else with their projects because they didn't know what the fuck they were doing. <laughs> you know? So then, like, I had to see the class again when I was a senior and it was really cool because uh, my teacher had like, he, he had cut a deal with me. He's like, all right, I'm going to give you an A because I know you know all of this shit as long as you've run errands for me and help everyone around the class like you did last time. I was like, okay, bet. So like, I still learned. 
like he gave me a lot of like business advice and everything like that was the best like mentor i've ever had you know and that's like a lesson to learn like like really i am oh. I see a lot of my buddies in chat right now. <laughs> <laughs> Word. Uh, James, I always want to ask you, um, are there any pitfalls of attending schools or colleges that people should be aware of uh, by taking that step? It's, a, it's something that I discovered the hard way, but I want to spread this far out. I want to make sure that as many people hear the pitfalls. Because I... I attended a, a terrible school. Like I'm soon gonna like come up with like a Twitch goal, like help me clear my debt because Sally Mae is like on my ass. But that doesn't mean all schools are terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. I can take a crack at that question. Um, so first, in general, like if anybody, uh, any of you guys want to get into our school, uh, get it out of the way, right? Like uh, you don't need it. Air quotes. Just to give you the James Patel exclusive take on that. You do need some degree of professional intervention in your life if you want to go professional. Uh, it's really, really important. It will save you months, if not years of time by being able to talk to an active practicing professional to know what the industry is looking for, et cetera, et cetera. But do you need art school specifically? No. All right, so to evaluate art schools themselves, again, the first thing that I did was I went to Discord sort of full of professionals. Right? I went to the Med Discord. I went to like my professional circles at the time that I knew from Twitch. And I said, hey, so I compiled this list of, of schools that I want to go to. Like, have you guys been to these schools? Do you know, have you worked with people that go to these schools? So I got like the straight up, like one-to-one, -one, uh, the real advice from people that are working right now uh, about how yeah. uh, these students perform, how many jobs they get. Like I tried to contact alumni as much as possible to say, hey man, I, I heard you went to the school. How did it go? So places like Art Center, places like FCD, um, AIM, all these places. Like I, I compiled a list of people that I, uh, I could talk to about the school experience. So I knew exactly what I was getting into. So definitely do your research. Just like Millie said, like the the entire industry of teaching art is huge. In fact, I think it makes more money than the industry of almost doing art. Was there as far as the artists are concerned. Oh yeah. So consider that a lot of these institutes are just brought up to just take your money and leave. So please do contact people that are actively working in the field that you are trying to get into, or at the very least have gone to the school they can recount the things that they've experienced and be able to give you accurate to-date information about uh, exactly what's happening there like today so don't risk this stuff a lot of these places have a lot of money for whatever reason art schools cost a shit ton of money so please be careful about yeah. investment definitely do uh yeah do get, get as much information as you can um from people that have actually gone there so i think being result oriented is a fine thing in this uh, this particular regard so just check You know, the people that are that get jobs, you know, people are in high profile jobs right now. What do they have to say about it? Just parse all this info and then make, make a decision based on your own, uh, you know, your location and your own financial ability. Yeah, just do your research uh, from people that are working right now. Get out there and talk to people. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, art school is incredible, though, if you can afford it and you can afford a good one. Like, it is unbelievable how much you can to make your progress better. Like people always say that uh, it's the same thing as like getting fit, right? It's like yeah. getting fit is all, all you're going to do is eat right and sleep enough and exercise every single day, right? It's just <laughs> simple. So the way that getting good at art is simple. All you do is get a good draw every day, put the amount of effort in, got to get good advice and that's it. It's so simple, right? Why isn't everybody a professional then? It's because yeah. this shit, doing it over the course of three, four, five, six, seven, ten, ten years, it's crazy hard sometimes. It's hard to do a simple thing every single day, every single, like, in the same consistency, uh, with the same amount, like, dedication, with the same amount of attention. It's difficult. It is so much easier if you are willing to, or if you're able to pay for it, to just get somebody to just tell you what to do, and then just do it, just mindlessly. Right? I'm so, like, privileged to feel like to be, having gone to a school that they knew exactly what they're talking about. So, oh, I yeah. just shut my brain off, and then just, like, a monkey just work every day for 10, 12, 14 hours a day. And I would know that it's going to a place that I, that was going to help me get a job. But I feel like um, most people, like, if you can afford that and if you want that that badly, do it. But I, I think in general, like play by ear, you know, just play it based on what your your own interests are. But realize that there is a value a, a lot of the times. Maybe not as much as the, the paycheck is for the for the school itself, but there is a lot of value yeah. in these, these places, uh, these like grinding institutions, a lot of value. 
uh, if you can afford it, of course, always work within your means. Um, but if you can afford it, go for it, man. It'll change your life. Thank you. Well said. Well said. Also, just to clarify, because I see Shay writing some stuff about art school, I went to a, a design school. And the thing about the school I went to was like, if you were not uh, specifically into what the school was going to teach you, you would have a very, very bad time. Because that school was hyper focused on one thing and one thing only, which is. Mm -hmm. Uh, concept art. This is all I cared about. Even even within concept art, it was See. environment three foot cutaway concept art, and I loved it. But I could I could tell if anybody that was not into that, you would probably hate that school. It's probably even the worst for you. Now that makes a lot of sense. Like having a school that really specializes in what you want to learn makes a lot more sense. Because well, if you just go to a random university or college that just happens to have that program, they usually don't focus on it or have as much like things you can actually learn from it, you know. So that was a really good point. Like you have to pick the right school if you're going to go. But, but here's a question, actually. From your perspective and what you've learned so far in your experience, what are some fundamentals that you definitely should work on if you're looking to enter a concept art? Uh, I'll throw you a curveball. Learn 3D. If you want to get into concept art, <laughs> please, for the love of God, do not Actually, go the, the route of like, I'm going to get my perspective so good that I can just draw things in 3D. Please, gotcha. for the love of God, do not make the stupid ass mistake because I've made it as well myself. Gotcha. And it does, it does you no favors. Concept yeah. is not the industry of drawing, it's the industry of ideation. So ideation yeah. does not specifically take the part of 2D. You have to be willing to work in other mediums if it benefits and if it is more advantageous to do so, to get your ideas realized. So learn 3D for the love of God. Do not have this mentality of saying, I I used to grow up drawing things in 2D. I drew fucking Goku and Mickey Mouse on my sketchbook, so therefore I'm going to draw stuff job. It does not work this way. In my professional job for AAA quality stuff, I think I spend almost 50%, if not more, of my time in Blender. Uh, please don't discount 3D. But beyond that, of course, uh, the usual fundamentals pers uh, perspective, more specifically Viscom, being able to like communicate things in perspective, things in space, so visual communication tools, you absolutely yeah. need to be good at. You need to be excellent at line work, uh, even though I'm uh, demonstrating it really poorly right now. But um, you got to be really, really good at line work. Line communication is absolutely crucial. Um, you, you have to have, so that's, I guess, a draftsmanship is a the fundamental there. Uh, have a good understanding of value, kind of secondary, but still important. Lighting is not as important as people think for design, but it is still really yeah. important. Uh, drawing is the most important thing. You need to be excellent at drawing, uh, be excellent at, uh, at being able to communicate things in line. But beyond that, mm -hmm. I mean, you can kind of get away with a lot of stuff. Um, but yeah, just have some idea of painting and uh, try to pick something stuff that isn't talked about too often. Perhaps just being able to just sit and navigate ideas, being able to mind map for crazy amounts of time. Like if anybody right now that's listening to this, right? If any of you guys yeah. enjoy diving into Wikipedia articles about just stuff that you don't think you're ever going to use for hours and hours and then trying to figure out every nuance of it, you might want to consider being a content artist because that stuff is awesome and you will definitely... Like you, you think fair quite well in this industry because I can't tell you how many people will literally be, want to become content artists because they like drawing pretty things, but that is not this industry. This industry really, really wants you to be able to nerd out and geek out on things, right? To find that one particular yeah. fact about, you know, maybe you, you just realize that people have this thing called saturation diving where you need to get down really low, but you can't, you can't surface too often because of the bend. So you got to spend a, a week or so in this high pressure container. And I want to make a show about that. I want to make a character about that. Like you got to be willing to geek out and stuff and then show it on canvas. This stuff is awesome. This stuff kind of makes you like, have you ever like tried to draw a building where you don't just draw the building one portion, you plan out where people co come in, where they go out, you plan out the shots, you know, how the people are going to like, uh, what, what's the most like ergonomic way of people uh, accessing the shop's interiors. Like these kind of geeking out things is really what make uh, makes a good concept artist. Being able to just love the details, love the way things work and fit together and try to bring that to the utmost into your work. That's what good concept art is made of. So just the ability to just sit down and research and read and consume information to later, like uh, not just any information, but like relevant information to, to visuals, they can later reproduce is huge. So if you like doing that kind of stuff, a hundred percent, you probably make a really good concept artist. So uh, yeah, do consider the, the importance. 
of uh, just being able to sit down and not draw. Um, all the stuff I've talked about fundamentals is stuff that is not drawing specific. It's like you should be willing to just consider that art is just one part of this industry. So think about all the other parts. Think about the ideation, the problem solving, the geeking out on stuff. This stuff is huge. It's awesome. It's yeah. huge and it's fun and it's great and it's not for everybody. Uh, if you're into just drawing things prettily, just do illustration. There's no harm in it and there's no there's no uh, shame in it. But uh, yeah, just realize that this is an industry of um, of just thinking, of trying to solve problems, and it's so freaking yeah. fun. And if you like doing it, then exactly what you should do. It. Yeah, couldn't have said it better myself. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, how important would you say painting is? Because we do see a lot of concept artists always painting their ideas and doing things like that. How important is painting or can you get just as far with mostly line art? Uh, you can get as far as you need to with mostly line art. Uh, as far as like, I guess the abstract level of getting work is like when it comes out of specific studios, every studio is going to have its own pipeline um, and they, it may or may not be line work heavy. So yeah. when I say you should be really good at line work, right? Ultimately, this stuff is myriad, right? It's like so many versions of this um, of this answer that can be given depending on what company I'm talking about. But I, I speak, generally speaking, I try to keep my answers catering to the 70 to 80% range of companies just because right. everybody is a special snowflake, right? Art is, is, it's not heavily unionized and there's no heavy pattern that can yeah. be every studio is its own unique creature because it's usually uh, a direct product of the art director, creative director, board of directors, I don't fucking know, but it's, it's going to be different. I'll give you an example, uh, like Studio Santa Monica, the guys that did God of War, like yeah. they like to do yeah. almost everything Maya. So like, I, I don't even know how to spell Maya. I don't know how to use, use Maya at all. So yeah, I have no idea about that stuff, right? Alternatively, right? A studio like Ubisoft, like the ones that um, made the new Assassin's Creed game, they love yeah. line work. They'll do everything in line work if they could, right? The only stuff they do, they don't do in line work is the stuff they show you guys, like like regular people um, that are. Oh, okay. So you should know line work really, really well. Um, just in general, for design, I don't think there are that many designers out there. Like I would say, maybe one in every like I don't know. Let's throw a number out there like a thousand may have like just gotten a job through painting but honestly speaking like the thing about line is line doesn't lie right line is a very very clear way of communicating something it's yeah. so much easier to hide things in paint that is true so even for the purposes of just getting good enough to get a job you are going to have to delve into line there is really no way around it however like for example the studio that i'm in right now like it's okay to paint some stuff um, there's still absolute lines most of the time, like really, really clean line work. I'm not going to do it right now, but, um, I still do a lot of the stuff, uh, in line, but not everything. Um, to give you an example, right? If anybody can look up the, um, the, the concept art for Assassin's Creed Valhalla, like just quickly look this up. For example, I look it up for you real quick. Um, okay. Valhalla. Okay. So look at this real quick. Uh, I'll put it in the chat for you guys to look at. So this All is right. this is the art, the concept art of Assassin's Creed Valhalla, right? So that's that's really cool. And you look through this, and you look through this, and you look through this, and it's like, oh man, concept art is about painting, right? Oh my god, so many beautiful vistas and these really intricate characters. But yeah. we from the school, we've had people work on this project, right? People behind the scenes, like Gabriel Tan, for example. And we <laughs> know for a fact that for every like one or two paintings that he did as a junior concert artist, I think his title was just concert artist. He did like 200, 300, 400 line drawings. But look at look at this, look at all this work. Look at this oh, crazy amount of work. You don't see, I see the line drawings on them. Yeah. So this is the problem, right? This is the big problem with this industry is that concept art is not the job that goes between artist to consumer. That's an illustrator's job. Artist yeah. to artist. That's your primary goal as a concept artist. You go from one artist to another artist, or you go from an art director to a 3D artist. So to put this into perspective, that's not entirely accurate. What, what it really is, is that you just are trying to convey an idea visually to whoever it is intended to. So that creates like two subcategories of work. The first one is productionable work. And the second one is not non-productionable work. So usually promotional work or communication uh, level work it depends on how you want to talk about it so but so you're saying that, some of the concept art is purely meant to just seem be seen by the consumer like like they 
Not so you're saying like consumer, but like some some of it could be, yeah. For example, look up uh, Igor Sid's um, what's her name? Igor Sid did a painting for Lilith for Diablo Four. Um, so this is a piece put in the chat. So this is a promotional piece. It's a production painting that's done promotionally. But this guy's a concept artist. He's just an incredible painter as well. And the thing okay. about this piece is that uh, it's still early development Lilith shot. But the, the guy, when he got his brief, you bet your ass, his art director said, listen, man, like, we're going to show this to like a billion people. So you better make this shit really good. Because if, uh, if, if he didn't say that, he would just probably do it in lines or something. You know, do a very basic painting. You have yeah, to consider, sure. you have to consider wh what you're targeting. Uh, a good example uh, on top of this is maybe a company like Riot, right? So why does Riot concept art just look so beautiful? Man, this, this, it's so crazy, illustrative, like so so much visual element to it. Well, the reason is because of the way Riot is structured. So when you make a concept, it's not just the artists that are looking at it, right? Uh, well, strictly speaking, visual artists, the guys that paint. Uh, then yeah. There's writers and there's directors and there's, there's people that are working on like mechanics in the game, like technical artists. There's so many people that may not be able to properly interpret a line drawing. So you need to be able to sell your work to these kind of people. And honestly speaking, I can show my production line drawings to people and they'd be like, oh, that's so cool. You know what, man? Put some color on it. Put some value on it. I'd love to see it. That's exactly what people are going to say because they can't just look at an idea and think of, think of how good it is. So this is the problem. Um, yeah. So the that reason is. I say line drawing, line drawing, line drawing is I'm talking about junior level entry concept work, which is usually line drawing based. When you become a senior, when you become an art director or production designer or whatever, you get to do a lot more painting, a lot more looser work. You get to do a lot of cool stuff, right? But the yeah. industry is built upon line drawing. You need to be able to do it regardless of your position, especially if you're getting into uh, getting into stuff as a junior. So you really need to be able to do this stuff uh, in line. So it's, it's immensely important. Painting is cool, but it is not... Uh, by any means a requisite. I can paint better than most of my people in my in my class. In fact, I think I'm the best painter in my class. Um, but th those people, like people around me, were all monsters. And I guarantee you, every single one of them uh, will be able to get a job. Uh, so I just lucked out on mine, but all of them are AAA worthy. Like so many of my people in my classroom could get jobs in AAA. Um, but the only reason that, I mean, it's not because they, they know or they don't know how to paint. It's because their line work is so solid, their design skills are so solid. And they can use 3D and photos and stuff like that to make up for their lack of concept, uh, lack of, I'm sorry, lack of painting uh, information. Yeah. So I can even... summarize, right? Uh, go on. So, so it's like, even if they don't paint, like they'll just bring in an illustrator for those final pieces that they show. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? If, like, if like, I feel like, like there's, like, I feel like, uh, like from what you're saying, like there's a lot of concept art that we just don't actually get to see. All they show us is the best pieces. Not even the ones that gave them the initial idea, you know? You won't see the majority of concept work. Like, people think that just because they bought the uh, the art off the books, you know? People oh, like, yeah. Bought that, you, know what, you know what the company did? Absolutely not. That book is not meant to tell you what the industry is like. That book is meant to sell the game. Uh, that book is yeah. not for you to get an inside information about the game. So you, you don't see you don't see like, the billions of, like, Scarlett Johansson photo bashes to placehold a female face. You don't see all this stuff because that stuff is never going to see the light of day ever. A lot of things are starting to make sense to me now with all the work that I've seen. So, I really, I mean, I, confused. Uh, I was looking to get into the industry at some point, but uh, my my focus right now is uh, comic books. So, I'm going to get into that industry and work there first before I start trying to get into concept art. Well, but if the opportunity arises, I'm going to have to take it, you know. Yeah, for sure. They're not that far removed anyway. But yeah, just to like re reiterate what I just said, uh, so it's clear because I went all over the place with that. It's just that uh, it just depends on who you're showing it to. It depends on what kind of production you're in. So the yeah. amount of line work you do for your job, it's going to depend entirely on what your job is. Mm -hmm. And your goal as an artist is just, or as a concept artist, is just to be uh, as clear and as production specific as possible. So who are yeah. you showing this to? What is the purpose of the work? That should be at the forefront yeah. and that will dictate how your work looks like. And maybe a final example, everybody's seen the concept art for the Mandalorian, right? Why does it look yeah. like that? Why has it got so much 3D and bash in it? It's because the Mandalorian is a photo real show because it's film, right? So yeah. everything yeah. needs to look yeah. like film. Look. Yeah, so, yeah, and not to mention, right? The Mandalorian was made uh, over the course of what? The, the pre-pro was probably two, three, four months, something like that maybe. 
Um, so it was just seven guys just making a billion pieces and all of them look really, really good. And that's why, and that's also why it looks so like, uh, so much like illustration to a certain degree because they're doing key shots. A lot of this stuff is key shot stuff. So yeah. it looks like um, a, a still frame of the of the show, of a movie that's going to happen, right? Yeah. But but key shots are a very common thing that seniors do, but not juniors in most companies. So um, yeah, you just got to th think about what is for, where is going, what does the production look like? Like the Last of Us Two, all the concept art is photo real because it's easy to make that kind of stuff yeah. for that kind of project because it's just post apocalyptic Seattle. Yeah. But you don't see photo real yeah. stuff for like Destiny Two concept art a lot of the times. Uh, it'll be bashed or like look at um apex legends for example look at danny gardner's work on our station that's oh, also for real yeah. um, and a lot of it's just line work so just consider what the production is yeah all right so the biggest important thing is that your job is to get the idea across and how to translate that into the final product right yeah you, the, your entire job is somebody gives you a brief and you sort of make it look uh like the brief intended to the person it's intended for within a time constraint yeah see i had a friend who explained to me that as artists in general our job is to filter the ideas of other people to bring them to life you know because that's that's what we do okay so, so let's that's... say if I'm uh I'm someone watching the stream and I'm like just trying to figure out where I want to go and like you know what I'm fired up I made up my mind I'm going for concept art I want to do this right. but I'm self-taught <laughs> I can't like afford school and um I need to figure out which ways to start because when I first started getting I, I found myself being sucked into the concept art world when was it I moved back home with my parents I took like a big ass L in life. And then I was like, okay, I want to start changing my life right now. And I started looking up art videos and I jumped around from like people who are illustrators and then I found Fang Zhu and I'm like, hell yeah. And I just kind of went all over the place when it came to um, concept art. So what is the, the very first thing from like easiest way to the hardest way of starting? All right, so I guess the easiest way to start is just start simple, right? Like mm -hmm. this is something that's really hard for people to do, I guess, a lot of the time. But uh, you just want to begin by just having enough fundamental ability to be able to accurately convey your designs. Because one of my my, my teacher Kingston at the school oftentimes said that uh, nobody cares how good your design is if your communication skills are shitty. Uh, a shitty communication is a shitty design because you can have the best idea in the world, right? But if you're not able to draw it in a convincing manner, nobody's going to take it seriously. So that's when the fundamentals matter a lot is that so people, when they're evaluating your mech design, don't go, why the fuck is that place so wobbly? Why is that so wonky? Like, so they don't, they don't say shit like this, right? That's really important. So you need to have a minimum baseline requirement uh, or baseline understanding of, um, of these fundamental skills. So perspective, uh, Viscom have a decent visual library, decent craftsmanship. These things are important. So uh, you got to hold off a little bit on actual design stuff until these things are at a degree that is somewhat okay. So let's just say you, you've, you've gotten this far, right? Let's just say you're okay uh, with some of these things. So where do you go gotcha. from there? Yeah. So you start you start with like really, really simple design tasks, right? Some of the most simple ones are things like kit bashing, where all you're doing is you're taking two elements and making them uh, combined. So, for example, you take a robotic arm, you take a quad bike, and you put the quad bike with a, with an arm on it. That's fine. Figure out how to do that. Why do you want to do that? Because a lot of design is in transition. So, transition just means going from one thing to another thing. I'll propose mm -hmm. something to you right now. I will combine a man with a horse. It could be something as cool as a centaur from Harry Potter. It could be something as stupid as the guy with the horse head. You know, it could be mm -hmm. stupid or it could be really cool. What depends is how do you transition one idea to another idea? What do you take advantage of? How do you navigate this particular thing? Transition is an enormous part of design. It's so, so important to learn and something that's so very little talked about. So you need to understand the skill, not to mention you need to be able to navigate with reference, know when to use it, when not to use it, um, be able to interpret th these things correctly, uh, understand how to follow a spec. So there's so many things about design and about art that have almost nothing to do with art. Um, it's all ancillary stuff. So to give yourself a chance to learn all these things 
uh, in a way that's actually going to benefit you in a controlled environment. It starts with a really, really simple design task. Kit batching is one of them, designing like room corners, designing like very singular one-off use props. Like these things are, are fine to begin with. I think they're totally okay. Um, but then you can start to slowly increase the complexity. Uh, instead of doing half a room, do an entire room, then do two rooms, then do a side of a building, do an interior cutout. And in the same way, start to gradually increase the complexity of your specifications. So don't just do a teenager's bedroom. You could do a throne room. You can do an animal themed uh, dock or an animal themed fishery, a marketplace. Start to gradually increase the complexity of your designs. And at the same time, increase the scale of your designs. Go uh, bigger scale. Ask yourself to have tighter deadlines. So you gradually increase the complexity. And mm -hmm. uh, therein, you can kind of figure out um, all the skills you're going to need. You're going to figure out all of the shortcuts you need to take. And that's, I think, the best way to possibly learn. That's the way that I was taught in my school. And I think I could devise a way that's quicker than what they showed us over there. So they just taught us the fundamentals there and then started start to give us progressively larger design tasks, progressively harder design tasks. And that way you just get better. So the key point in all of this is that you need to understand how to um, slightly or gradually increase the difficulty level in your work. So this is a very difficult thing uh, without having somebody evaluate your work for you, but try at least to think about, okay, I did a room last week and that was easy. Let's do two rooms, stuff like this. You have to progressively overload, just like lifting. It's the same shit. So you try to progressively overload, do tougher assignments every week, a couple of weeks, or you kind of cut down the deadline, try to over deliver all these things, something you need to do. And then try and have as much as possible some professional or somebody that knows what they're talking about to evaluate your work because design is a hard thing to teach so because ultimately you're not just designing cool stuff you're designing cool stuff that sells in a way that the industry is looking for it right now so i'm not i'm not going to just do something like a feudal japan house i'm going to do a feudal japan house uh, with a particular like idea in mind right maybe it's a house that's meant for a purpose like a merchant's house and i'm not just going to do any shot of it i'm going to do a three fourth cutaway shot of it, a very productionable shot of it. And that's something that the industry will look for. The industry likes seeing that kind of stuff, right? A lot of mm -hmm. companies can use that kind of work. So there's a lot of stuff that you will never know about until you actually start to do these assignments and then see where where does your understanding fail, right? Where does your particular, like, because everybody is kind of fighting themselves when it comes to design. So where do your ideas sort of fail? Where do you start, where, where does like your own preferences stop? And where does like general productionable preferences start? These things need to be on. So doing these assignments that helps, uh, getting feedback helps a lot more. So these are things that I would consider. And I guess the hardest way to do it possible is just to literally say, okay, I'm gonna from day one, I'm gonna just start doing my designs and just pick something like sci-fi or something like uh, like super super detailed steampunk or whatever, mm -hmm. and then just get fucked kind of stuff because <laughs> yeah. it's it's always gonna look amateurish. In, and in general, if anybody in the chat wants to get into concepts, kind of stay away from sci-fi. Stay away from really complex mechanical stuff. Only do stuff that you understand really well. Uh, and try to stay on reference as much as possible. Uh, mm -hmm. I got into AAA all the way from being a beginner. Um, just okay. using reference. Using well-referenced, well really well-curated and well-communicated reference design. I didn't do yeah. anything crazy. Uh, you can look at my portfolio. Um, it's just completely super reference, super static uh, designs. And that's what uh, got me in. There's so many reasons I can go into maybe uh, if this is a different, different question about this, but All stick right. safe, do the safe stuff. Like I remember once um, Feng gave us like, an evaluation on, uh, on our work and he literally said, um, if you're going to do a Dwarven Fortress, Please, for the love of God, don't go, ah, they've done Dwarven Fortresses in Warcraft. I'm going to make mine a Dwarven Techno Necromancer Disco Fortress, right? <laughs> don't do stupid shit like that. Honestly, just do the stuff that's been done before and do it well. Do it really well. Do it to a high degree. It's, yeah. just, it's the exact same reason why people say, you want to get better at line work? Do a bunch of rocks. Do rocks really well. Why? It's because rocks are easy. Rocks are simple to do. You're not going to struggle with proportions too much. So yeah. you can focus on the true thing that you're learning, which is line work. The yeah. same way, when you're learning concept and design, if you focus so much on the uniqueness of your idea, you're going to fail so hard with all the things that support it because your idea is the center of everything. But what about your line work? What about your research? What about your 3D? Yeah. What about your, your communication skills? What about your set dressing? You know, What about your storytelling? What about your moment? 
these things are completely external to the idea itself. So if you manage to resolve the idea completely, you can just focus on this stuff now and get better at it. And the thing is, is that ideas will change. Ideas change all the time. But these supporting skills, being able to curate a reference, being able to be confident in your 3D skills, being confident in your photo bashing, uh, being able to accurately set trust things based on research, having a good process of mind mapping, they are idea independent. And that's exactly what you care about because your ideas are going to suck when you first start. Of course, they're going to suck. What you, you don't even know what you're doing. They're going to be terrible ideas. But that's not the point. The point is not just not to change the concept art world three months into doing concept art. The point uh, is, to, yeah. is to develop the skill set so that eventually when you do get those million dollar ideas, you'll actually have the skill set to support them. So people want to laugh at your work. You'll actually pay attention. Yeah. You made a lot of good points. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I remember too. Yeah. I was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna do like some super fantasy world like uh, shit," and I'm like, "Well, that is a lot more harder, and uh, and it's a more like, yeah, I'm just trying to be original, and there's no point of doing that, especially if you have things in the real world that's already existed. You have a bunch of things that's already been done. Why don't you just riff off of that? Because everything yeah. that's out now is basically a copy of something." And that, that is goes true for almost like that goes for like everything. Like if you're even if you're trying to do animation or even trying to do comics and stuff like that, stop trying to be super brand new and original. Like you can come up with like with an interesting plot and the way how you draw it and like pull it out is could be very like, you know, captivating. But if there's already like simple beats to a story that like a lot of stories already have, why not use those same beats? Why? Why would you overcomplicate things? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of this journey, just because you're spending so much of it by yourself, you're gonna be fighting yourself so many times. And uh, one of the things you'll fight yourself about is definitely gonna be um, trying to overcomplicate. Like, I get advice to a lot of people. Like, there's a guy called Azar who I give advice to a lot of the times. And I swear to God, this guy, he makes the same mistakes that I made, and it's frustrating because now I know how my felt when uh, they gave me an assignment and I'd be like yo man you said give me one throne room i'm gonna give you fucking three throne rooms man don't even worry about it. and i remember like <laughs> of course I, didn't say, I didn't say anything like that but I said similar <laughs> shit before. and i remember like my teacher his, his face just fucking following like i remember his face going like grimacing because i think he knew when he made that mistake and now i know when i made that mistake but don't like l literally this is an industry where quality matters, you know? Like I, I had such a crazy amount of reality calls at school when I oversubmit and try to over deliver for, for work. Like I remember, I'll give me an example from my own history. Like in, in school, we were asked to do two pages of I think eight drawings each. I delivered four pages of like 10 drawings each. So I did like way above the requirement. And the guy pulled me aside in the crit session and he said, hey, okay boss, real simple. Why did you give me more than double the requirement when he could have given me more than double the quality for what I asked for. You have to think about it, right? It's like, Ooh. yeah, it's, it's, he's complete right. And my ass was fucking furious when I heard that. At the, at the guy, I was like, what do you mean, dude? Like, my minimum quality is better than most people in the class at that point, right? Because I had drawing experience. What do you mean? But then with time erodes his ego. And at the end of the day, I realized that he's right. Because nobody's going to pay you for padding numbers. Numbers mean nothing. Right. Well, plus they only paid you for the for the amount that you gave them more of. So you're giving them more than what, like, like you know what I'm saying? Over delivering is fine, right? Like one of Feng's biggest pieces of advice is you underpromise, over deliver. But realize that like what delivering even means, right? Mm -hmm. What are you talking about when you think deliver? Delivery means almost maximum amount of quality you can achieve, like mind blowing amounts as much as you can put in the time frame, right? That's the bare minimum. Because somebody asks you for three character concepts. You give them the best concept they can ask for, right? And if you can do that and then give them more on top of that, that's fine, yeah. do it. But the point is, is that like, nobody's going to congratulate you because you tried to do a great thing. That's not how professional, professional work doesn't work this way. Like nobody's going to say, oh dude, like don't worry about giving me like 50 shitty designs. I only asked for five, but you gave me 50. So I guess the number <laughs> compensates for it, right? Hell no, because the uh, work's not going to move forward at all because you fucked up. You, you didn't read the spec. You didn't deliver what they asked for. 
it's on you. That's your, your, your salary. It's your job. You fucked up. So yeah. I think it's really important. Like I had so many of these wake up calls at school when I realized just where my priorities were and where they should have been. Um, and it's really important to just get that shit out of your head. So again, the same mistake can be extrapolated into the idea that I don't want to do the old stuff. I want to do the new stuff, man. Like Dead Knight or uh, Space Ace Marine or like Orc War Chief. Everybody's done that before. I don't want to do that because I'm better than that. Fuck off. You're not better than that at all. You suck. You're horrible. Please just do that stuff. Do it a couple of times. Get really good at doing this kind of stuff. And then you can start to execute on your own ideas because it takes like 50 like generic Orc Chieftains to actually build your, your character design portfolio. Don't think you're better than everybody else on the get-go by, by watching of your ideas. Do the safe stuff. Do the very very boring stuff and you do it really well because by doing so you will build up the skill set that you need to, to do the more crazy stuff the more out there stuff very very important so yeah yeah sorry i was like i was like letting it sink in was, man. yeah really, exactly it was a sink in moment like ooh. you really <laughs> dropped that knowledge bro yeah. no this is like such an easy mistake to make it's the same thing with like with any any skill set any learning right like yeah you might like are people that have like given up on art like i don't i don't know how many of these people did something that's like way about their skill grade and it looked like shit, so they just gave up you know it's like mm. There must be yeah. hundreds of if not thousands of people like really like just stay in your lane and do the best you can at a difficulty level that's appropriate to you. And yeah. I feel like this stuff gets a lot, a lot more rewarding, a lot more easier, uh, a lot more manageable. Because like asking a beginner to do, to do like sci-fi design or something like that, it's like it's nutty. I never wish that on anybody. Um, yeah, it's really, it's really, really difficult. So yeah, do the safe stuff. Do the reference stuff. Do it well. Something that Feng said, I think a thousand times when I was at school, like he said all the time, he said, please just do the safe stuff. Just hit that quality benchmark. Don't go crazy. You don't need crazy ideas. You just need crazy quality on your portfolio so that then your ideas, when you get later on, they can be something that people will actually pay money for. But for right now, as a beginner, nobody's going nobody's gonna to hire you into a company because your ideas are crazy, right? Of yeah. course they will if they are, but only if they're well executed upon, right? Because yeah. like, nobody's going to give you a second glance. Do you think anybody that has like the a crazy idea is going to turn anybody's eye if the perspective is bad? Nobody will give a shit about you. Nobody will ever gamble on you to say that, oh, you know what? His ideas are really good. It doesn't matter if his perspective is okay. We can teach you perspective because these people know how easy perspective is to learn. And that just, it marks your character with such a fucking stigma. If you don't have the yeah. basic decency to learn these easy things, ideation is the hardest thing. But if you can't even learn perspective, then what use does a company have for you? Like you're like dead weight. <laughs> so learn the stuff, learn enough fundamentals so that you're taken seriously, and then yeah. do the simple stuff so you can push quality. And then once your quality is being pushed, then you can focus on, on crazy stuff. Then you can do the wild stuff. But until then, just stay safe. Stay safe and do the easy stuff. Yeah. At least until you have your foot in the door, right? At least until you have like your foot in the door. Yeah. I mean, you wanna, you don't wanna be samey same. You don't wanna stick to reference forever. But honestly, if you've never done well reference work before, it has a place when you should be doing. Like, and this again, uh, we said this early on, and I'm glad we said it, but I'll say it again. Mm -hmm. Think about who's talking right now, right? So, concept artist, I really, really, really needed a job. Like, uh, I'm coming from an industry. Uh, an entirely different industry where I was earning money, earning a good living. This is the kind of thinking I think that gets you a job almost guaranteed, right? Because yeah. obviously there's a, such a room, there's such a demand for people with beautiful ideas and with really illustrative work, with not a, not a single bit of line on their portfolio. You can get a job this way. But I think the mentality that Feng has and the mentality that I have, it caters to the bottom line. It's not the stuff that will get you the greatest jobs in the world guaranteed, is the stuff that will guarantee you a job. You will break into the industry with this kind of stuff. If your stuff is well referenced, good quality, good line work, good cutaway, good production level stuff, you will get a you will get a job. Maybe not AAA or whatever, but you will get hired. And that's something that I I really enjoy that kind of thinking because I want to know that every single thing I do is guaranteeing me some way or the other to get a job. So I'm not gonna take any risks on my portfolio. I want to do the boring stuff, do it right. And maybe once I, I did all that stuff, maybe then I'd take risks. But I ain't, I ain't taking no risk with no career. I want to get my job. 
So that's why yeah. I did exactly what it told me to do. I didn't take any risks. I, I referenced as much as I could. In fact, like even till this day, I'll make the I'll make the mistake of like not referencing enough. But I did it, and that's how I got in. So don't ever underestimate this stuff. Don't ever try to be like original when it shows weakness, right? Yeah. Like the minimum yeah. requirement. And maybe I can end on this uh, for this particular note. But if you can't beat a reference, it's your responsibility to do the reference. Again, I'll repeat that. If you can't beat the reference at its own game, do the reference. If you say I have this fancy pirate pistol. And if it's not as good as a wheel lock, then don't do your pistol. Do a wheel lock. If you design a chair and it's not better than a beautiful Art Nouveau chair from Pinterest, you you are doing yourself, you're shooting yourself in the foot, but not using the Pinterest chair instead of your own chair. If you're designing a temple and if you think somehow that over the course of one night, you're going to beat an entire culture that developed their temple building skills over the course of a thousand years. If you think you can beat them, having never done a temple before, I say good luck because you're not going to beat them. So understand where to get this detail from, understand how important reference is, and don't try to make the reference different or better unless you're actually going to beat it. So really, really important thing that was hammered into us at school. And uh, yeah, so, so important to, to understand. Yeah. And that is, yeah, man, really dropping the knowledge, bro. I'm just taking it in right now. I'm trying to apply it to me trying to break into comics. Mm. What is your opinions on um, not comparing yourself to industry standard people? Because uh, a lot of times on a stream, I would be like, well, yeah, my art's like whatever. It's not like the best. It's like trash or whatever. I always put my art down. It's like it's whatever, you know, because I always see myself as like I'm trying to like get to a certain level. And a lot of people find that like toxic and really negative. But it's more of me like, no, I have a end goal and I. I want to reach that point like here's the finish line now gauge where I am close to that finish line yeah I think um, I'm just gonna speak from my own experience here but I think you have to compare at some degree you really have to mm -hmm. um, and if it's something that you're bad at you got to get over it somehow some way because you are competing against other people uh, I'm not gonna talk about this in terms of motivation I don't think necessarily people will have to like figure out a way to get motivated from other people's work. I think a lot of people can stand to do that, but uh, you have to know what's out there because you are now no longer treating this like a hobby. You're treating this like a job and knowing yeah. what's out there is key vital information that will help you push better. Like maybe not in motivational sense, but in the sense that it's going to help you figure out like what is currently being done, at what level is it being done, what are the techniques that are being used. These are valuable questions that you can't just sleep on. So you got to know this stuff. Um, so you yeah. are doing yourself a huge disservice by closing your eyes at what's happening. And it's something you can get better at, man. Like, I think, uh, honestly speaking, the better you get at, at the skill, I think the easier it is to look at work that's better than yours because it is better. Um, and you should get yeah. used to, to talking these terms for sure. Um, but better work than your own is important to look at. And I think once you get the skill set, It'll be easier to look at it because you'll be able to look at it in more of an analytical sense instead of like a like a competition sense, you know. And yeah. oftentimes, realistically speaking, you're not even competing against these people, you know. Most of the time, like these are senior level artists anyway, so you're not you're not trying to do senior level work. Yeah, you're, just, you're looking at it uh, as a benchmark or whatever, yeah. not as like okay, this person is going to be competing against me. Uh, it's not often the case. So, yeah, you okay. should be looking at that stuff. And honestly, speaking, like I I I, I hope that people can look at work that's much better than their own and then be just really motivated by it. Because I can't tell you just yeah, I push I get looking at the a, or whatever. Like here's a question. Thing. What do you, which do you think is harder? And what are the what are the differences in the challenges between uh breaking into the industry and staying in the industry? And like how do things change once you're already there and what new challenges come with that? Ah, there are a few. Um so once you break in I guess it depends on where you manage to break in for and how okay. you get it. So sometimes I think people will break in doing work that may not necessarily be the work that they want to be doing for the rest of their career. Yeah. It becomes very, very hard. Uh, it depends on how adjacent things are. But um, in general, I feel like when you're accepting your job, do try and always accept stuff that is at least in some way relatable to your eventual career. Like, so Feng has two big quotes. The first one I already told you, which was, uh, 
always under promise over deliver so under promise and over deliver the second yeah. one is never chase the money the idea is is that you have a goal as an artist right like i'm not going to get into this big spiel of like self-expression blah 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 everybody's got their own yeah. interpretation of this stuff but the idea is is that you got stuff that you like to do and you got projects that you want to work on like for example for me like Lucas film i want to work on star wars for sure so yeah. i'm not going to take too many jobs that involve me doing stuff that is like way separate from like yeah some sort of like good technical design trying to keep like it similar was about. trying to keep it similar so, so you're yeah, you get ready for stuff. it for instance we had a story of the student in our school that got into gearbox guys that made borderlands and uh, he got in based uh, i think he was doing icon design or something like that right and that's a, that's a problem because you got to think about how like where your career is even going because if you just do icons for a year, then what's your portfolio going to look like? It's mm, going to be the same icons. stuff it always. It's going to be a lot yeah. of icons, and then the stuff that was there already, and you can't use year year old work in your portfolio. That's crazy. So yeah. you're just going to get more icon jobs. So this is a problem uh, with being a professional. Is that you got to be a professional in the thing that you actually want to get jobs on? Because uh, realistically speaking, right? If you, if all you have is like dark fantasy in your in your portfolio, you think you're going to get like steampunk? You think you're going to get like sci-fi? Not really. I guess it depends on what kind of dark fantasy it is, but most of the time you just going to get dark fantasy jobs. So you got to consider like, if you're maybe not where you want to be, uh, you definitely should keep working, but then you'd put more time into your portfolio after work. Uh, you'd spend less time doing overtime and just doing more time into developing stuff. You try and like take on projects that are, that the company has that are more oriented to with what you want to do yourself. So you'll make yeah. these kind of adjustments. And I think um, that's probably how you do it. That's maybe one thing that's a little bit more different. Uh, the second one is, I think, just knowing how to use your time. Because this is a huge problem for me personally, is that I have a hard time doing personal work, period. Mm -hmm. Like, everything that I want to do on my day-to-day -day basis has to be job-related. So, yeah. I work eight hours in my job or something like that. And then I just want to keep working on my job stuff. So, I'll do the same thing I did for my job, but I'll do it for myself. I'll do it again and again and again. Because I see the level of work around me, and it's it's terrifying sometimes just how good these people are. So of, of course, like I'm not somebody to just sit sit back and be scared. I want to push myself to as much of a degree as I can. So I get better. However, this comes at a cost, which is I'm under pretty yeah. strict NDAs and stuff. So I can't post anything to my portfolio. So my portfolio is going to stagnate. So it's not good to have your portfolio just stagnate on ArtStation. You need to be constantly updating your 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 stuff with uh, with more things, right? You update your portfolio with more things. So I think time management becomes rough. Uh, additionally, the, the problems of like negotiating your your hours, your your prices, the business side of art becomes huge. And I think a lot of artists are just such shitty businessmen that a lot of people are going to have problems um, being able to negotiate uh, prices, being able to negotiate with the boss, understanding your location, um, working yeah. on tighter deadlines, the whole bunch. You know, that that is very true. I did notice a lot of people aren't very good businessmen. And yeah. I'm guilty of it too, but I've, I've learned a lot. And I learned to like always look for more with what I with what I do because a lot of people are like undervaluing their work, and that's why the industry standards and everything, all this information that's out there, you need to look at before you undersell yourself. Hell yeah! An issue that I ran into that I just never want to have to do again is that I always want to put out my best work. And then when people are always like, or, you know, my clients are always asking me like, oh, okay, well, can you do less work? And then that'll make it cheaper. And then I would actually do that and end up not putting my best work forward. And after doing that, I felt really bad because I was like, okay, now I'm, I'm lessening the value of my work, making my work. I'm not putting all my, all, I'm not putting my own to my work and now it's going to be out there and people are going to see it and think that's the best representation of what I can do, but it's not. So that's why you can you need to look in the business if you're going to enter this field because people will try to fuck you over and try to pay you less than than you're actually worth. And we need to try to avoid that. Uh, my my biggest thing is um I hear too many horror stories like I'm I get commissions here and there about like you know I was looking for work for like the longest I contacted a few people. I got someone to say yes, and they accept the work, but they never deliver. Or when they do accept the work, they don't deliver until, like, five months from now. Yeah. My thing is, like, it, like if you really want to take art seriously, give yourself a due date. Like, 
especially That's if true. you're saving money. Whenever I get a commission, I'm saying, hey, you're going to get it at this certain time. Even if I'm busy or not, I give myself that due date. And then I really pay attention to how much time I am spending, like trying to get these commissions done or whatever. I'm keeping track of everything. Yeah. And do not take it easy on yourself either. Because I caught yeah. myself giving myself two weeks to do something that I did in two nights. Yeah. So like why like I could have been working on more than one project. If I can really work this fast, why didn't I take more commissions to make more money for that time I spent? Mm -hmm. So it's all these things you gotta factor in and look into. And uh and and still, like I said before, don't over prepare. Like the best way to learn is from experience. Because some people I find spend so much time preparing that they never actually even end up doing what they want to do they kind of like freeze in that yeah. preparation state you know yep at my school we used to call it analysis paralysis you, know, like you just keep thinking and thinking and thinking yeah <laughs> that is a much better word for it <laughs> oh hey how about that how, how do you deal with analysis paralysis and what did they teach you about that and how to get out of it and start to get more productive I think once you have enough experience and you've worked under enough deadlines, you sort of realize like when you're really pushing the buck when it comes to, or like really pushing it when it comes to the amount of time you spend in a particular area. I think just setting yourself harsh deadlines is going to solve the problem for you because there's only going to be a certain number of times that you will deliver late or you will deliver under quality um, yeah. that you'll be okay with. And eventually you're going to be like, all right, something's going to fucking stop here. Something's going to give because I am messing up royally. And that's how I got over mine, which is just that like when you, even in a school environment, right, the risks are kind of low, but when you are delivering lower quality stuff and the people around you, and you know for a fact that you work just as hard as they have, maybe air quotes, yeah. um, then you see that, oh, well, clearly I'm doing something wrong here. And then you, you think about where you spend your time and you're like, oh, wait a second, I fucked up. Spend way too much time in this particular area, and then you're gonna tap out of it. So, I think just having your goals just like strongly out there uh, sort of helps assuage it a bit more. Uh, but beyond that, I think uh, a much more reasonable solution is just to time everything you do. So, have a particular allocated time for ref uh, for reference gathering. Have a particular allocated time for mind mapping. Have a particular time for sketching and thumbnailing. Just basically uh, time yourself. Have epochs for all this stuff. And that way you're never spending too long in one particular area. So this is the way that my one of my art directors did it. Um, yeah. He just had allocated times for everything. And he'd say, okay, so by this time, I need to be able to have my do my designs realized because I need so and so amount of time for some other aspect of, of the work. Because you have to realize that for, for this kind of work, there's a lot of like hard um, like bottlenecks when it comes to the work. For example, line work is a big one. So you cannot get around a certain amount of line work time. So it's going to be like, what, maybe 50 to, to maybe, I don't know, like 30 to 50% of your time is going to be in just clean line work. So yeah. you have to be willing to think about, okay, so if I do another hour for my design, then that's going to mean that I'm going to have one hour less for my line work and my line work may not be as clean. And that's not okay. Because at the end of the day, like your work has to be clean. It has to be presentable, even if it's shitty. So you realize where the priorities are and then you'd make an appropriate like. You say, okay, fine, let's cut certain areas off. I don't think that'll help a lot. So just kind of like be motivated just because you're not hitting your goals with this kind of analysis paralysis. And at the same time, like you can allocate specific amounts of time for parts of your process so that you're never lingering in one area for too long. So it's easy to kind of snap out of it when you realize you've taken up like 50% of your thinking time just on like searching for references instead of like looking for written material or something like that. I, I see. Think having that goal in the forefront will help. So yeah, time everything if you can. It's gonna help. All right. So what normally do you work, does your work hours uh, and tasks normally look like? Uh, my work hours is always about depends. It's like between four and eight hours a day is what I work, depending on the number of tasks for that particular day, depending on how the client is. I'm a junior in my company, I guess you can call it. Um, so I won't have that much time. I was working two jobs right up till I think a couple of weeks ago. Oh shit. So then my hours were pretty fucking gnarly. So I get off my main job and then I'd work until maybe three or four AM. Um, 
which I don't really mind, but I was getting a little bit too much towards the end of it. So I ended up uh, not pushing for uh, additional contract with that company. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I, I think the hours are quite reasonable, especially after FCD. Um, I think Feng really wanted the school to be the hardest thing we ever did. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I can't see too many things being harder. The hours we pulled for schools, grateful for the environment. But the hours are quite reasonable. Uh, and at least with my company, the, my AAA company, I get to kind of pick uh, my, my when, I, when I start working, as long as I deliver within a set amount of time. My other is a really cool guy, learning a bunch from him. And yeah, he's, he's pretty casual about this stuff. So, uh, I get to basically a lot of my own hours. Great. Everything goes into a timesheet. Get paid at the end of the month. Yeah, things are pretty solid. Okay, dope. Well, uh, have you ever had any? Have you ever had any experience with bad clients, and how did you handle it? Um, so here's a nice thing about concept is that you're never dealing with consumers. Um, very seldom will you ever. In fact, I don't think it doesn't happen too often at all. Um, okay. So you're dealing with professionals, and this is like the biggest reason why I didn't want to be commission artist. Why I wanted to be a professional, a studio, is because yeah. I do not want to deal with people. At all, like I'm fine. I'm well spoken. I'm kind of like I'm yeah. decently charismatic. <laughs> I understand, fun. man. <laughs> I can I can do it. I just don't want to. I just don't want to deal with people like whinging on payment. I don't want to deal with people asking for constant reiteration. I don't want to deal with the fact that I don't know if I'm going to get a job or I'm going to get uh, money the next week. I want to have certain things secure because I come from a mindset of already having a job in a different industry, right? So to yeah. me, it's like I work man to five and I get fucking paid at the end of the month, right? That's my mentality. So I don't want to work the commission job where I have to hope that people like my work enough for me to get a steady wage. I don't like that at all. So uh, it's important to me to have some security. So I get that with the job that I'm working on right now, which is good. Uh, but even then, um, it, it's, it's easily possible for you to have bad experiences with people that hire you. Uh, but yeah. in my experience, most of the time, this is just because it's, it's basically a, a function of you negotiating poorly so i've made some pretty shitty deals with, for myself in the past uh but it's kind of entirely my fault and this is the nice thing because some clients working commissions might not necessarily be negotiable but every company is at least more negotiable than the average like ordinary client right even if they're shitheads it's fine yeah. because you have a right to negotiate as a professional um so you're always going to be guaranteed some conversation so you can ensure that you're being paid somewhat fairly um so yeah i feel like this problem isn't that much of a problem in this industry at least of course you can get like completely fucked over if you don't read the fine print and stuff like that and of course like some companies will form some rather shitty practices on you but by and large i feel like um yeah like we don't deal too much with like really weird client horror stories in this industry just because um because that's basically your art director's job right i'm sure my art director would have a completely different answer to this He'd be like, oh man, this, they, they constantly deny my good designs and they, they want to push for this really whack stuff. And I'm sure he'd have a different answer. But since I'm just the artist and I get my art director, like he communicates on my behalf with the client, uh, I get to just chill. <laughs> so I can just like do my work. That's dope. Word. So no longer in the days of like taking in commissions and dealing with the random ass... Uh clientele yeah i couldn't be fucked with that stuff i hated it when i was doing it and i still hate it now <laughs> not to say that it's a bad thing of course right? yeah, it's, still, but, it's not for everybody yeah hell no nah. i even hear horror stories about how artists like just quit because of uh the commissioners like the way how uh, they were treated and stuff like that and i'm like uh, i think you just need a little thicker skin yeah not to mention, right? Like, I mean, I, I, I want to be a professional in a studio mainly because like, I love the idea of working on projects. Right? I want to mm -hmm. work on something big. Like, I think every one of us has the need to work on something that's greater than ourselves, right? Even if it's like something from our own creation, like, like yeah. the world we created or some existing project. And I think uh, for, the, for the stuff that I want to work on personally, like uh, I really want to like be in the industry just because like, I want to work on these like, huge, massive sprawling projects. And I don't really care if it's mine. I, I, I'm just happy to just put some effort into somebody else's idea 
and just bring that to life. I'm, I dig that idea. I dig that a lot. So um, yeah, it's totally fine for me to like. But yeah, I think there's a lot of avenues you can go to, even with design that involve you just uh, dealing with clients one to one, maybe like uh, if you work with like as a freelancer, maybe like you deal with clients a bit more or smaller companies. Like right now, if anybody's interested in getting jobs, by the way, a lot of um, D and D companies, a lot of tabletop is hiring right now. So you can easily get a job at one of these companies, but it involves you dealing with the client a little bit more uh, straightforward. Uh, you're not even with too much of an art director, just somebody that has a lot of money and is going to like make a bunch of models. But this, it can be really cool. It can be really cool dealing with these kind of people. And uh, yeah, not for everybody, but uh, yeah, they are hiring right now. So job there maybe. But uh, yeah, there, there are a lot of ways to slice this, but there's, there's an opportunity everywhere as long as you're going to search. Yeah, thankfully me, myself, not too much client stories. Like I have some stories from back when I used to be an illustrator, but like right now it's here with my job. I think my, uh, yeah, I think my job's great. There's another uh, oh. thing that been going around as well. Uh, <laughs> it's been a hot topic for like, I think the, for like a good half of 2020, uh, like the tracing rules. Like, uh, what what are the the do's and don'ts of tracing and photo bashing? Because people always will see like, oh, you're tracing or you're photo bashing. Are you, know, you taking the coward's way out or you're cheapening yourself or uh, whatever? Uh, and for me, I'm like, I'm trying to get work done at a timely fashion. Now, if I was working on my own independent thing and I just felt like being a hundred percent purist, I'm just gonna drive everything from scratch. Like, yeah, uh, maybe I can like you know try it on my own. See, I dislike those people because, like, those are the same guys who will somehow try to shame you for using a ruler to get a straight line. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Like, it, it makes no sense. Like, not everything has to come from me, especially if I'm going to draw it and it already exists. Like, right. I need to draw a chair. Let me put this chair in the background, get the shape in, and then I finish it later. Yeah. Or, and a lot of times I think that, like, as long as you change some of it and uh, learn from it at the same time like like there is no bad way to trace something or photo bash i i don't i just don't get those people you know yeah like the 100 percent crazy like art purist like i'm trying to be a kim jung gi god i'm like yo you think he didn't trace anything in his lifetime to like learn it the way he did like like they are mistaken if they thought he just woke up one day and was able to do all what he could do yeah. That's how you know they haven't watched enough uh, Kim Jong Gi interviews to know like how frustrated he got with art. Yeah. Because it's funny because this dude as a guy who can just draw anything, but he talked about his struggles like early on, talking about like yeah, like I used to have these crazy ass fits and I'll like rip up shit or I'll throw things away in a, the most rudest of all angriest of all fashions, you know. Yeah. You was about to say something, James? Yeah, sure. Like, as far as, like, how much of my work must be done through hard fucking old school walk uphill both ways effort. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The thing is, like, nobody's going to reward you for effort. People reward you for deliverables. Mm -hmm. like, people reward you for getting the spec on time. So nobody gives a rat fuck about how you get there at the end of the day. As yeah. long as you get there and you do so legally, it's not going to get the company in trouble. Right? So... As far as like learning is concerned, it's maybe slightly different. When you learn, you want to be getting the maximum benefit out of what you're doing. So in that case, it might make sense to do certain things a harder way. But take it from me, for portfolio, you are doing yourself a huge disservice by not implementing as many tools as possible to deliver on your concept art is not concept drawing. It's not concept painting. It's concept art. Just take yeah. the concept, take the art out of it. It's called concept designing. Right? Because when somebody, if somebody comes up to me and says, James, you're not an artist, did you photo bash? I'm like, fine. I care so little about being an artist compared to just doing my fucking job. You know? Yeah. Because so, your job is to get the ideas down. It's not to create the perfect image. That's not even your job right now. Like, it's all yeah. about ideas, all about the create the creative aspect of it. You know? 
Yeah, and you, you're going to owe it to yourself enormously to simply just do as much as possible to ensure that your ideas are delivered in a timely manner, in a particular level of quality. That is your job. So it does not really matter uh, what techniques you use to get there, as long yeah. as you're there, as long as it's productionable, as long as it's usable by the client, it's totally fine. All these things are fair game. Now, like that doesn't mean you should straight up trace like your main design elements. Of course, your design itself uh, should be coming from you. And most of the time you can't just get away with tracing that. But yeah, at the end of the day, like consider what you're being hired for. You're being hired to solve a problem visually. Nobody's hiring you to be the most original artist in the room. Nobody gives a shit about that. If yeah. Doing the job, do the job. Yeah, I mean, the so far, like the truest way to stand out is to be the guy who gets it done. Like, be the guy, be that person who can get the job done and get it done well. That's the way you stand out. Like, how long can you keep that up? Because that's, at the end of the day, that's what matters the most. You can be the most original guy, you can be the best fucking artist, but if you never get anything done on time, no one will care. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I also have uh, some viewers on my YouTube channel that really prefer the whole artist habits thing and coming up with uh, routines and stuff. And I kind of like just straight away from it because um i did the whole i'm gonna draw a box i'm gonna practice my lines every fucking day james you've seen it as like my daily warm-up routine and stuff like that and uh I, I just strayed away from doing that as much i hardly do it at all at this point in time because it's like okay i i'm doing all these lines and stuff but what am i getting done at the same time like it's nice to have these habits and stuff but um i don't think it's like a hundred percent very practical so what would you consider would be like habits the the very good like the best habits for a good artist uh that's a big one i think they're like this baseline necessary requirements to get your goals i think the first one is always you should be willing to put in a sizable chunk of work that's proportional to how soon you want your job you should be willing to put this on a, on a daily basis. If you're not, then maybe this is not the industry for you. Maybe you have a poor understanding of really what uh, what you what you actually want to do with your life. But if you're yeah. not like willing to at least try and push that envelope on the amount of effort you're putting in a daily basis, just find something else. I'll be honest. Like like I said before, I all my life, right? Like for 25, 26 years, I thought I was just lazy. I thought I didn't care. I thought I was just one of those fucking losers. But it turns out, right? Like, all I, if I if I found something I really liked, I would do that more than anybody, right? It's mm -hmm. like Millie can attest to the fact, like, by people that know me will know that I grind so fucking much for art. And I can tell you that I'm not a I'm not like a grindy person, I'm not a hard worker. I just give a shit about the things that I give a shit about. And I think a lot of people are the same way, right? Like, of course, if you're lazy, you're lazy, and you need to fix that. But uh, at the end of the day, if every day just feels like shit and everything just feels like shit all the time. Let me just do something else, find a different industry. Uh, and that's, there's no shame in that at all. Mm -hmm. But my point being is that just, you have to figure out a way to put this work in. The work needs to be done. There's no sidestepping it. There's a baseline level of effort, there's a baseline level of experience that you need to do in order to get somewhere in this industry. So beyond that, right? So beyond building up that stuff, um, you should be doing the stuff that is at your skill level, uh, that's going to benefit you actively right like for instance like i have a lot of things that i do these days that are uh they're they're done in a way that it sort of uh it, it, it evokes what i'm actually doing with the rest of my day it evokes how good i am at the things that i do with the rest of my day for example draftsmanship i'm not the best draftsman so yeah. i do very very basic line drills every single day i do this i do really really simple line drills and like you should have seen the first time i did this coming back from scd because i used so much 3d at that time I was so bad at this these days. <laughs> right now, like I'm, I might seem like I know what I'm doing, right? Like, oh my god, he's hitting the he's hitting the points perfectly. But like, the point is, is that I've been doing this after I got my job in the industry. I'm doing fucking point to point lines. I did this the first day of design school when I didn't even know I wanted to get into concept art. Why? It's because my art director said, James, your line work sucks. Get better at your line work. <laughs> so I do this. I do basic like perspective drawing, not of boxes. I do like 
uh, guns and I do like gun sights and like hair dryers, stuff like that. I do a lot of that kind of thing. So that's they, very basic. So you, instead of just design. doing the squares and the cubes, you do things that fit those profiles. Yeah, to a certain degree. I think it just depends. Uh, the point I'm trying to make here is that you have to kind of manipulate your difficulty level depending on your experience. So if yeah. I knew nothing about something, then my equivalent training for that thing is going to be for somebody that knows nothing about something. I can't yeah. just go like, I'm a professional, so everything I do must be what professionals do. Hell no, stupid way of thinking. Kind of like yeah. gradiate things and uh, just manipulate things in a way that they are much more specific to your own expertise and your own like, uh, the, your own manner of it, I guess. So I do really basic line drawings because my line drawings suck. However, for painting, right, I'll do pretty advanced painting stuff because my painting is like, it's pretty good. So I'll do like stuff like this for, for practice. I'll do like really vast, like, uh, you can see this on the screen. Like I'll do really quick studies like this in like what, an hour and a half or two hours. I'll just smash something out. Uh, something that's pretty complex just because I'm pretty comfortable with what I'm doing. So I'm not going to just ask myself to paint cubes anymore. I'm going to ask myself to paint these, these crazy scenes or whatever. I'm going to ask myself to paint really active, really busy comps because it helps me kind of figure out certain things that are at my level of understanding, right? So I think yeah. the goal for your routine is you must cater your routine to your particular skill level. So it's not going to benefit Kim Jong-hee too much by just drawing fucking cubes every single day. He's done that. He's gotten yeah. as much as he can from that. But now no. he's going to draw more complex <laughs> things. Right? He's going to do like fucking 7 point, 8 point, end point, fisheye lens perspective. And yeah. he's, 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 he's going to do yeah. so, With jeeps everywhere. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so cater it to what's important. So for example, if you are bad at color, then don't just try doing an extremely colorful piece. Do something with simple colors on it and get good at it. If you're very, very good at color, then do a master study of something that's very good at color. So these two things are catered towards two different levels of expertise. So your whole routine should be based on your current level of expertise. And I think it's worth like talking to people that know what they're talking about to say, okay, what do I do? I'm this good, what do I do right now? And I think that that's, I think probably the best thing you can do for yourself just to figure out where you're at and then cater it to where you want to go. Yeah. Nice. Mm. This is a fun painting, by the way. I've been stuff like that. Yeah. I'm still getting into painting. Right now, I could only do like black and white. I don't like to mess with too many colors yet. So, getting my values down, and then I'm going to start going into color picking properly. Uh, but damn. I'm trying to think of another good question right now. But, yeah. yeah. Like, but hitting you with a lot of, uh, like, things to think about, right? Yeah, yeah, like, real shit. And it's like, like, he's putting it into words, like, better than I could right now. That's why, like, because, like, a lot of these things, like, I really agree with. And I'm getting a lot of, uh, like, new details about it because he has more experience and everything. Mm -hmm. So, like, I'm, I'm just really feel like I'm learning a lot right now, you know? Oh, and yeah. I'm like, looking for ways to apply it and like apply it in my own way of course and yeah man yeah, i guess in general way. just just address with the previous question right like you could always when you're learning something you can always control for it and i think maybe people don't control for things enough and yeah. i feel like in essence i keep saying the same thing which is just keep it simple push the quality yeah, keep like this this, this, I, this you know, ideology can like be pushed to a lot of things. Like for instance, if you're trying to get better at value, right? It's like, try to just keep the value arrangement simple, make it really stark, make it like really stark lighting contrasts. Don't pick people, pick like rocks or buildings or trees. Just try to control for as many things because what, what's the difference between painting a person and value and painting a rock in value? Because ultimately your ability to communicate value kind of transcends the subject matter. What yeah. changes is the proportions, right? Because you can draw a really shitty, ugly fucking person, but a rock is still a rock at the end of the day, right? So <laughs> yeah. you can control for proportions by picking an easier subject matter. The same way with like color, or the same way with edges, or the same way with design philosophies. You can control for the amount of difficulty you will face to help you better receive results because it yeah. does matter. It does matter the quality of work you get at the end of your study. Right. If you are saying that, okay, dude, it's fine if my quality is shit because this is a really hard thing, change your mentality. It's a stupid way to think. It just means that you, you bit off more than you can chew. You should be producing the highest level of quality you can. If you can professional level work at every stage, 
if you can push the quality, push it. Like if you if you draw a cube, it's your responsibility to draw the best fucking cubes. You can't say when I'm a professional, I draw really good cubes. No, terrible way of thinking. But yeah. Right now, right? The stuff that you're doing, the stuff that is catered to your own level of expertise, do that to the highest level, and you will see a lot more benefit from it because you'll encounter more mistakes, you'll get better advice, and you'll be more ready to push these things when it comes time to push these things. Like yeah. don't like wait until you're a professional to do professional cubes. Do professional cubes when you're still learning and then do gradually more things from there. But like, like you see, push that quality. This is the kind of shit that I'm talking about. This is the kind of shit I look for. You know what I mean? Like, I'm really glad I met you, man. Like, you really like I've learned a lot so far. Like, really nice to meet you, by the way. Um, but yeah, like a lot of this shit you're saying, like, I strongly agree with. And it's kind of making hard for me to try to make sure I further the conversation and challenge you at certain points. <laughs> Cause I agree so much, you know what I'm saying? But like I've run into these issues a lot of times, and you're you're giving a lot of the same answers that I give because like and and it, it brings me to the thought of uh how important it is to just actually stay positive because staying positive helps you simplify things and get things to work because you can always find a way like where there's a will there's a way and i a lot of times the people that i, I try to help and like they they really stuck in this like this negativity about it all like oh my stuff isn't good like like exactly what like uh what mill you were saying you go mm -hmm. through sometimes but, but there's people that go like deeper in that hole to the point where they 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 start instead of looking for solutions they just start looking for problems yeah. like they like to the simplest things like uh for example someone used to ask me like like well like i'm trying to get better but i don't know what to practice and i was like so baffled by the fact that he said that i'm like what do you mean you don't know what to practice you practice what you're not good at like it's that simple like you're making things more complicated you're doing all of this like just make like you want the results you want so you find a way to make it work for you like it's really that simple like, a lot of the times and the positivity is the really important aspect of it yeah, yeah people, it's, it's all about it's morale. Like, exactly like it changes so much go on sir no that's it that that's it go ahead i think people have like a really hard time understanding like what, what is like being lazy or what is like being uh like um not committed or being a little bit like disoriented with your process like what does that even look like because the thing is like nobody ever says okay i'm not going to do the work or today i'm going to be fucking lazy or today i'm going to be uh not as productive as i want to be everybody wants to be productive right everybody wants to like get their work done. it's just that, yeah. like not not getting the work done takes a lot of forms you know it takes a form of like I'm just gonna watch another YouTube video. It takes a form of like, ah, oh, you know, maybe it's not the right time to do that. It takes the form of, yeah, man, but like, I wanna just do my cubes today. I don't wanna do my buildings. Like, it takes a lot of ugly forms. So I yeah. think it's really important to realize that like, uh, there's so many things that sneak up on us, you know? There's so many things that will come to us in the guise of something very benign, almost like a good idea, a safe idea, something to protect us, but it's what holds us back. I think something that really changed the way I look at myself is that I realized at some point during during design school that like so much of what I had learned was literally unlearning the things I'd learned before. It was literally getting rid of habit. It was getting rid of things that I had held so close to myself that it was basically my identity at that point. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. you were fighting yourself at every stage because we're, I mean, we're not like masters of what we do, but exactly. everything that we do is a result of everything that we know right now. So that means that we don't know, like all of our stuff we got, we got wrong. It's not, it's not a lack of information that's keeping us down. It's this perpetuation and this percolation of, in, of, of information that's wrong, like wrong yeah. ideas, wrong mindsets that is keeping us bad. Of course, more experience is going to make us better, but it also needs to overwrite the stuff that we have right now that is keeping us down. Because yeah. real mastery, it's rather simple to look at. It's actually really simple. The way that some people go about stuff but we get in our own way so much that you have to realize that so much of what you think about yourself is wrong so much of the way you approach things right now is wrong and so much of your laziness so much of your unmotivation or your unproductiveness it just comes in the guise of things that just don't look dangerous at all remember nobody says yeah. i don't want to get my work done today people say a billion different things that all mean that but they never yeah. sound that way so you gotta exactly be i think one thing that helped me a lot 
that I really I'm still currently trying to change this. Like I hate hearing the word tomorrow now. Like I hate because oh, yeah. I mention that to myself all the time. Oh, I'll do this tomorrow. I'll do that tomorrow. And then shit doesn't get done. So I'm like, damn it. Like I never want to do anything tomorrow anymore. If I can get it done now, I will get it done now. You know what I'm saying? Word, like, man. Like I call that shit like, the promise of tomorrow to myself. I, I thought this all the yeah, time, man. Yeah. When I was back at school, I'd be That's like, yeah, I'm tomorrow saying. I'm going to change my life. Tomorrow's going to be a time. It's like that January. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we're going to get fit, you know? They're yeah. like, man, next like, year, I'm going to get so fucking fit. I'm like, bitch, go to the gym right now. What the fuck are you doing? You think New Year's is some auspicious day? You're going to get serious? superpowers? Like, I don't know. dog, like, seriously, like, it's, it's so weird because it's like, a, like, honestly, starting is the hardest part. But once you do, you just all of a sudden start to have energy. So like it's like it's this weird thing where it's like doing the work fuels you to do more work. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. And of course, being healthy and everything is a part of that too. Like there's a lot of these things, we, especially because we're artists, like we sit inside and we work like alone a lot of the times to stay focused because you need to have that energy, but you got to start it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's like, and I mean, like, I'm no fucking guru or nothing. Like, I just learned this shit, and I'm really, like, more motivated than I've ever been in my life to, like, get going and start working and, like, start applying to get get that, like, first real comic job that I want so bad, so badly. Short-term girl, goal, and then look for more opportunities after that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and if there's anyone here that's, like, present or watching a replay or something, if you're just new here, uh, the one thing to do to get into the groove of just like getting started is just come up with a project start working on a project an independent project it has to, it doesn't have to be geared towards anything uh you can be like i know i have like some young viewers in here that like you know they have low confidence sometimes when it comes to drawing and stuff but it doesn't matter how yeah. shitty you are just start working on something the more you start completing things the more you start getting that confidence on starting new things like I, I how do I how do I feel like this? I, I always like point it back to like working out because that's like literally the like the biggest marker of my entire life. That's what where my mindset like shift and changed. Um yeah. just being consistent. I, I did it as many times as I can that I, my body could even handle. You know, I try to approach it yeah. smart, I got my optimal rest, but I kept on showing up to the gym. Eventually, like the hundreds of pounds I was carrying on myself started like fading away, and I didn't even notice that until like every day yeah. shit just started to get easier all of a sudden. Yeah, it's like it's like this weird little like it's like this like uh I don't know what to call it like a speed bump that like once you get over you forget everything before it even existed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's just so it's just so wild, and you'd be just amazed by like. How far you have gotten to yeah and the funny part is it makes you ha almost need to keep going because mm -hmm. then if you don't you just have all this like pent-up energy you don't know where to put it yeah. <laughs> it's mad funny and i'm like shit like i got that energy back started exercising again start doing that start like doing everything i should be doing now or i start feeling yeah. like um i start getting more emotional angry or stressed out and it's just because I haven't been working out or I haven't been doing a thing that I've been doing for the longest. Yeah. Like I've been learning new ways to do it at home because I, for most part, it's for me, it's a lot easier if I'm actually at the gym. Oh, because, yeah. Because uh, you're going there, you're paying for it. All the motivation yeah. is there. Yeah. And like the the space, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. a lot of my routines were based around the weights and certain machines that I would use on like every time I went. But yeah, I mean, like take care of yourself. That's a big part of the motivation factor and keeping yourself going through what you need to do. Like I know it's, I know it sounds like we're off topic, but all of this goes into the motivation and positivity factor and being oh, able yeah. to schedule, which like all applies to all aspects of life. You know. Man, so much to think about. Uh I remember I have some art like some of my friends uh, uh, like I love my friends to, de to death sometimes, but like I stopped kicking with them because it seemed like um, 
they their priorities were like, well, I work a lot, it's my downtime, and I'm gonna be playing a new video game that came out, and I'm using this as a reference point to study or to learn stuff. I'm still doing the art thing. What is your opinions on playing video games as a way of studying and stuff? Because I just see it as like, no, you're just playing a game. It doesn't matter like if you're taking in the visual rep like visualness of the game, you're still playing the game at the end uh, of the day. That's a good question. Yeah. Um, I'll be right back. Yeah, no problem. That's like a it's a big load of bullshit. I'll be completely honest with you. Like people that say you're playing a video game or something to uh, to get better or for research, you're full of shit. Yeah. Uh, you have no idea what you're talking about. Just for the simple reason that if you're doing it for like research uh, about ideas and stuff, realize that if you if your line work and if your fundamentals are trash, then nobody gives a shit about your ideas anyway. And what you should be focusing on in your first little jaunt to get better should be just the presentation, right? Should be just these core fundamental skills of conveyance. Nobody cares so much about your ideas. So it doesn't matter even if you're getting cool ones from the game or whatever. Like nobody's going to care about what you get if you're not working on this core skill set. That's number one, right? Yeah. Uh, number two is like there's just because you're working on a game, does that somehow mean that you're going to be like figuring out all of the, like the internal work that's gone into that game? Like, are you going to be able to like extract it via osmosis into your head if you don't see it spread out in front of you? Mm -hmm. You have no idea what the CA for that game looked like. You have no idea what the deliverables look like or uh, who the artists were that worked on it and what the work uh, the work hours were, or not even the hours, but the deliverable quality. Like you got such a poor idea of that from just looking at the final product because we don't work on the final product, right? Mm -hmm. We're not like gameplay designers or something. We're not level designers or uh, experienced people. Like we just content artists. We work back end. So look at back end if you want to research back end. Don't look at front end stuff. Doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. Of course, for inspiration can come from everywhere, but it's so overrated, man. Ideas are so overrated. Like. You can get it in this industry with the shittiest ideas possible. We just a you just be the dumbest motherfucker on the planet you can get in the industry just because your work is quality. You know how to follow a spec. You know how to solve a problem. You have a good design brain on you. It's fine if your portfolio is just full of like really mediocre ideas. It's fine. Nobody's gonna hire somebody that has incredible ideas and shitty fundamentals. Everybody's gonna hire somebody that has okay ideas and incredible presentation. Why would anybody not hire that guy? Because your auditor can just literally tell you, okay, do this instead of this, and you're fine, you're golden. Your auditor is not going to sit down with you and teach you perspective. No <laughs> company's going to work that way. <laughs> How do you Bro, I, <laughs> I sit down and that's the first thing I hear. <laughs> yeah. People are straight crazy yeah. when it comes to that. Yeah. But yeah, man, you see, this is how we know that, like, you're speaking the truth. Like, we can yeah. really just sense all the passion in what you're talking about. Like, because that's how I get when I talk about comics, too. Like, yeah, I get, I get aggro, man. Like, so, like, bro, like, tell us how it is, man. Like, don't hold back, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, um, my girlfriend will tell me, like, oh, yeah, I watched some of your YouTube videos lately. And I'm like, oh, shit, you watched them? Like, please don't. And she's like, yeah, you come off as kind of preachy, as in, like, these are the things you should probably like consider or doing and stuff like that. And like a lot of people are not going to like accept that. And I'm like, well, I'm not a, a bullshit person. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to give you bullshit. I'm not going to sugarcoat things for you. If I sugarcoat yeah. everything that I fucking said, all my friends will have diabetes right now. So why? Hell yeah. <laughs> like, I, I, no, I, I'm not going to sugarcoat these things. Like, I'm not going to hold your little baby hand. I was just about to say something like that. <laughs> Man. Man. Yeah, I feel like these are yeah. things that should be said. Yeah, like, because, I mean, yo, I, we're supposed to be adults, right? Like, yeah. like we shouldn't, like, nothing should be sugarcoated anymore because we're at the end of the line. Like, what's the point of hiding anything from us or the people around us? Right. You know what I'm saying? Unless they're a child. So if you can't handle it, you shouldn't even be listening. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Man. Like, I'm actually about to... Actually, no, go ahead. I was going to ask another question. As of, um, what matters more in, uh, in, in art? Do you just draw something that's visually cool and that could be used? Or having the perfect understanding of fundamentals? I would say the first option. <laughs> but let me let's see what James got to say. Yeah. Well, ultimately, right? Like, 
<laughs> what's her fucking job, right? Our job is to just exactly. Our job is to make something that people go, oh, wow, wow holy shit, that's cool, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes, like, oftentimes these things are very consistent with the idea of, okay, I need to get my perspective right, I need to get my line work right. But the thing is, like, if you refuse to bend on any of these things, there's going to come a certain point in every piece where you're like, if I do this hyper-realistically, it's going to just suck. I'm sacrificing entertainment value for art accuracy, and that's not even a a question of course you sacrifice like you don't give a shit about keeping things like i'll give you a, uh, here's a very common example in concept in this uh, topic at hand it's called the far side wing problem where if i draw a plane right have the wing on one side a lot of the times the perspective will tell you that the wing is going to be just so fucking slightly pinched right on top of the plane on the top of the plane like this uh, yeah uh, it's visual i'm sorry so you have to see my screen but the thing is, yeah. all the time we'll just fake it and we'll just make the wing longer than it needs to be just because it looks better on the canvas. So, yeah. perspectively, the wing needs to be shorter, but it looks like shit, so of course I'm going to make it longer. The same thing applies for so many different things. Like, scene to scene, for example, is another thing. Like, the, yeah. the author will say, okay, James, draw me a scene in the top three-fourth view and then give me the same scene in the cinematic view. So, the two, two options, right? And you'll think, oh, cool, so I'll do one scene like this. And I'll just, in Blender, I'll just change the camera angle and I'll do this, something like this. Wrong. You never do this. You know why? Because just because the shot works in this particular position doesn't mean the comp is going to be good in this position. The comp might be terrible. So you know what you do? You rearrange uh, stuff. You rearrange this to make it look good, to make it look like a good yeah. comp. And you might say, well, James, what the fuck? You're literally, you're breaking every rule here. You're, you're showing <laughs> the environment. And I say, I don't give a shit. That's a level designer's job. That's a, that's a set designer's job. My job is to sell the environment. Right? Once yeah, a cylinder yeah. is your job, it's your job to make it fucking work. Right? So I know it can <laughs> work. It's within the boundaries of it working. So I'm yeah. just going to do as much as I can to sell the idea. So realize that like you're getting no brownie points because somehow your vanishing points all line up and you get a good boy like drawbox.com makes you an honorary member. Nobody gets a fuck. <laughs> like, do, do your goddamn work. Yeah. You see, <laughs> you give oh. all the right reasons. You give all the right reasons for all of that, but like I put it into like simpler terms and like mm -hmm. what I what I would say is that like what is art? To me, art is stimulating a sense. Like the everything visual, you're stimulating the eyes. It's something that looks nice. It's gotta look cool. It's gotta look appealing. Like that's what the goal is in mind. Same thing with food, you're stimulating taste. You know what I'm saying? Martial arts, you're stimulating an ass whooping. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, it's all the like that's what matters the most when it comes to these mediums and that's why i never really liked when like the purpose of a piece of work like you know the contemporary stuff like i still dislike that because it's like you're sacrificing all the visual value just for meaning when if you really wanted to just convey the meaning you didn't even need the visual platform but all of that is you know got a lot of different shades of gray and all and everything that's just the best way that i explain it yeah <clears throat> I told the shit out of people on TikTok just for the fucking views. It was fucking great. Um, <laughs> man, so I did uh, some fan art, right? Just, I'm like, I don't know how to fucking get seen on TikTok. I'm like, you know, what? I got frustrated. Hey, everybody on TikTok, I'm throwing myself out here to be crucified. Critique my work. Tell me what is wrong with this work. The it amount makes... of people who gave out critiques on that shit, I, it was laughable, man. Like, you guys don't know what the fuck you're talking about. There's some people that, like, have some interesting points. Yeah. But, like, overall, those comments of people critiquing, like, hardcore to, like, the anatomy, the color, and stuff like that. Yeah. The likes outweigh all of that shit. Outweighs the fuck out of it. Yeah, and it's like you know, that was like another proven moment. Like, yeah, it doesn't matter if it's fucking correct to all fucking standards. If it just looks visually cool, and you love it, people are gonna like it anyway. Yeah, I mean, yeah, seriously, there's a lot of times where designs aren't accurate, but people ignore it because they like the way it looks. Yeah. Yeah. Again, gotta cater to production. Gotta cater to like maybe it's like a really high precision project, which would require it. Yeah. But in general, right? Like, so it's like I said before. Like, you gotta stick with the be as accurate as you can within reason for the production. But like, when it comes down to like coolness over technically correct, just pick coolness. Visual is the first thing in the industry. Yeah. Like, we might call ourselves like problem solvers or concept artists or 
like designers but yeah. really like, we're not fucking in- okay i'm an engineer but we're not all, all de- engineers right we're not like building this <laughs> thing in real life uh, yeah so just like just because like your giant walker mech doesn't ob- obey the square cube law doesn't mean you don't do it sometimes the cool factor outweighs all this stuff like bad yeah. fundamentals uh to read like, like the bad fundamentals is, is bad don't ever have bad fundamentals like if your perspective yeah. is so bad that it's obvious to like an artist then fucking work on your fundamentals please but like uh, if your uh, highlight is slightly misplaced by a couple of inches if your car shadows aren't particularly accurate like if your color theory is somehow slightly misplaced like these high level stuff leave it to the illustrators as a concept artist like you're always going to be a b-level illustrator and trust me i'm a b-level illustrator telling you this um it doesn't matter uh just yeah. do as much as you need to convey your, your design that's it don't have so your fundamentals can't be bad enough for you to get in the way of the design uh, but beyond that like don't just stick to like this high and rigid way of thinking it doesn't really do much for you so yeah it just depends on like i guess again depends on what the design is what the production is and just yeah from there yeah because yeah you are like 100 right because at the end of the day this is the this is a part of the entertainment industry like yeah okay so i'm gonna be uh wrapping up here and i I only have a few more questions for you james all right. This was a rapid fire, dude. Put some, like, okay. some work on the screen and I was fucking focused fully on that. <laughs> okay, so what studio or company would you commit murder to work for? Lucasfilm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw that coming. <laughs> <laughs> what are your thoughts on goals on uh for artists when it comes to landing their dream job? Like the ones that say, I'm the first job I'm going for is Blizzard and it has to be Blizzard realize that the people that are working at blizzard right now when they were working at blizzard everybody wanted to get into a different company you can easily land a company that will eventually turn into the next blizzard or riot don't search for it because one of the key factors in getting a job is competition so if you go down the path of the most resistance you better bet your you gotta puck your fucking ass up and be prepared to just grind more than anybody else possible or yeah, right. you could just do something that is just as good for a slightly different company if you can manage it if you can find it in your heart to not want to work on league of legends do something similar but not the same work in a job work on like some chinese mobile company or whatever and then submit that portfolio to riot you probably get in quicker than most people that are submitting directly to Riot because you know what? Riot is a company that's not full of idiots. They're full of smart people that will say, do I hire this high school graduate with no work experience that really, really wants to get in and he wants a really good cover letter? Or do I hire this guy that's worked two years in a decent company that does work just like we want the work to be done? We know he ships stuff. We know he's reliable. Who do we hire? So it serves your interest in so many ways to just aim for something that's reasonable something that yeah. fits your own interests and they can eventually lead you down to the jobs you want unless of course and again coming from me unless of course you can't for some reason separate the idea of not working on the company in which case still away let that let that feed into your work and if it doesn't do something else but if like this riot idea this blizzard idea doesn't force you to outdo and outwork everybody else that is trying to get into that company then please yeah. just reevaluate your, your priorities and work appropriately to that, that to, to that priority. Don't do anything more. Yeah. That's awesome. <clears throat> I believe yeah, you're right. Anybody could be the next riot. Just... Yeah, that's true. That's very true. Um, what was that? I think we already answered. Uh, we already answered this one. I'm sorry. Uh, I think it was what was the best way to get critiques if uh, that's actually valuable. Yeah. Sorry, one second. Coughing. Yeah. Okay, so critique that's valuable. Always ask when you're giving a critique, your first question should always be, what is the purpose of this artwork? If it's not, you're giving an improper critique. Secondly, uh, you should always look at the artist's body of work. Why? It's because you can evaluate things that are mistakes over things that are oversized. What's the difference? An oversight is something that you know, but you made a mistake accidentally. A mistake is something that you thought was right, but turns out it was wrong. So. Yeah. To evaluate what is right and wrong, you must know what the purpose is. Because, for example, you can't just say push the values as a solution to every painting. Some paintings don't need the values to be pushed. For example, if the artist says, yeah, James, I'm trying to do a high-key painting, then push the value will be an improper piece of critique. 
So figure out what he's doing first or what she's doing first. Next, um, make sure that you understand the body of work a little bit to separate mistakes over oversights. And then lastly, try to quote existing material from people that are better than you. So most of the critique that I say, it's never something that I have experienced myself. It's something that some professional artist has experienced and has conveyed to me that I remember and I convey it to them, always citing the source because that will help them solve their own problems in the future. Because most likely, if you have a problem related to value, you have five problems related to value. So it helps to just know where the solution came from. So you can go back to the solution, read up more about the material and solve the problem by yourself. Nice. And what would a a concept portfolio look like? Like how many pages? Um, the easiest way of like getting in. Uh, let me let me let me rephrase this because I, I got this question all over the place. If they're trying to get in right now, what would be the easiest way to get in, and what and how would their portfolio be supposed to look like? Um, okay, so if you want to get into the industry right now. Uh, please have productionable stuff on your portfolio. That means three-fourth stuff. Um, that means uh, things that have a lot of explanation, backstory, profile views of uh, of things, a front view, back view, just productionable stuff. Don't, don't do illustrations and call it concept art. So figure out exactly what you want to do and then do productionable level stuff. So if you're doing characters, please give me a front view, back view, or give me front three-fourth, back three-fourth. If you're doing props, you need a profile plus player view. If you're doing environments, do um, three-fourth cutaways. Uh, and then do cinematic shots. Uh, if you're doing vehicles, again, do profile view, do play upon if you do interior cutouts and, and do three fourths. Um, so production, production level stuff needs to be in a portfolio. Uh, beyond that, you should, and you can Google any of those terms I said, by the way, they're all pretty commonly used terms. Um, but beyond that, um, definitely have a decent number of pieces in your portfolio to avoid people thinking that you just fluked out on a bunch of good pieces. So good numbers between 10 and 20 um however on a portfolio don't pad it don't just put work for the sake of putting work if it's better to have two good pieces than having eight good pieces and one terrible piece because the terrible piece puts everything into um judgment basically it puts everything into suspicion um if you if your if your decisions are bad so make sure to push the quality keep the quality consistent for your portfolio please work on a project if not multiple projects Projects will give companies a lot of clues as to how hireable you are because you have to make everything cohesive. Everything must fit. Everything must go towards one singular purpose. All of the stuff must have language that is somewhat similar. So it, it solves a lot of problems that people might have when they're asking questions about your skill set on your portfolio. Uh, beyond that, in terms of content, try to do things that are more historical. Try to keep things as reference based as possible. Please don't do fancy sci-fi stuff. Do things that are much more easy to reference like historical stuff. They might be every now and again, you might get a Star Citizen, but every year you're going to get a Ghost of Tsushima, you're going to get a Sekiro, you're going to get a game that is based almost entirely on medieval or feudal Japan or Wild West or something like that. You're going to get a game like that. So basing stuff on history is a great way of doing it. If you can choose between different types of work, please choose environments and props over characters. There's less competition and more work available. But if you can't not do characters, you can do characters with props. You can do characters with vehicles, characters with limited spaces, and that'll expand your uh, your job possibilities, as well as you can do character costume variations, you can do NPC variations, you can do creature variations. This can also be a way to help you get more jobs uh, a bit quicker. And uh, finally, for portfolio, just make sure you're always running your work by professionals, for people that are basically working the job that you have already, so you know you're putting the right stuff in, that you're not blindly attached to certain pieces that you shouldn't be attached to, and that your arrangement and everything is as good as it possibly could be for presentation's sake. So you're actually going to get the job possible. Don't make a website, put it on ArtStation, uh, try and arrange stuff in a decent manner, organized manner. Um, be careful about your thumbnails. And uh, yeah, good luck getting a job. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> and um, that's about it. Unless there's anybody in the, the Discord, not Discord, uh, the Twitch stream that had some questions they wanted to be uh, answered. Because I remember there was a few questions earlier, and I'm like, well, let me uh, let's let's all get through this interview first before we start answering uh, stuff from the crowd. I tried answering yeah. most of it while I was talking, so I think all oh, okay. of the, I think every, everything's answered in text. I think. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah, that's yeah. me in the chat. Yeah, you're Indian broad, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
if there's uh, nothing left, well, thank you so much, James, for giving us your time and uh, no help way. shedding some light on this uh, entire go. industry and uh, what it takes to get inside. Um, is there anything you'd like to promote, like your social media or your uh, Twitch, YouTube? Uh, I'll tell you what I want to promote, man. Like, if anybody listen to this, you get a job, um, there's an opening open, like mail me at indianabroad at gmail.com or message me on our station <laughs> at Indian Abroad. Get me more jobs, please, for the love of God. I, I don't need your money. I don't need your support. I don't need your donations. I want to okay. work, man. I'm working already and I want to work more. And what's more, I know people that need work. So if I don't get the job, if I don't accept the job, I can just give it to somebody that deserves it. So get the fucking yeah. word out there. Uh, I, I know something of what yeah. I'm talking about. And uh, hopefully uh, that convinces people to think about me when they get new stuff. So uh, yeah. yeah, think about me, man. Indian Abroad on our yeah. station, IndianAbroad94 at gmail.com for business inquiries. <laughs> Where? Awesome. Well, uh, let me just wrap it up. Yeah. If my face cam works. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, thank you guys for joining uh, today in the stream. Um, another big thank you for James Patel for coming in and dropping some mad knowledge bombs and also Redo for joining yeah. us in this conversation. Uh, no I hope problem. you guys enjoyed it. If you guys did, uh, go ahead and hit that follow button. I will also be posting this video on YouTube too as well. And just share this to any of your friends that needs to hear this information on like on what they need to do or any tips and advice that they need to hear before picking a school, making a portfolio, or just trying to get work in general. Um, thank you guys for watching yeah. and I'll see you guys next stream. I will be streaming again later tonight and uh, it's going to be my downtime stream. So I'm going to just be hanging out with y'all and um, having some fun. All right. Um, that being said, you guys have a goodie and I'll see you guys later.